We should, we should be live now. And if not, we'll yell at Connor. Hello, chat. <laughs> We're here. We're back. It has been a month. A little Almost. bit over a month, yeah. Prince Division's like, back, baby. Feels like yesterday. It really doesn't. Connor! What? That was good. I give it seven and a half. Thank you. Maybe seven low for seven that? For, so, okay, low seven because it didn't have a lot of a length to it. I okay. give it six. Six good. or There was five. no reverb mm. or. Yeah. I'll be sure to turn my reverb on next time. It didn't That's put the fear cheating. of God in me. Don't cheat. I dock you points for cheating. <laughs> I didn't cheat yet. I'll give you extra points for cheating. <laughs> Oh boy. This is like the angel and the devil on either shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the devil. Which one am and I? I'm your advocate. Uh. I see. Well, hello, everybody. We're back with more Prince Prince Division. Uh, and we're, we're uh, oh boy, we're in a situation now, aren't we? Uh, yes, yeah. Car chase, indeed. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute here. We're glad to have you all back. Uh, and I'm sure we're glad to be here as well. Uh, let's go down the horn and see what everybody's up to. Arkolf, what's going on? Nothing terribly much. Kind of taking a break from streaming for a while. Ah, but gotcha. when I resume, you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash Arkolf. Excellent. That's it. Woo. Uh, Sarah, where can they find you? Uh, I'm on Twitter at Sarah with an H and with an E, Willia. I don't got any shilling to do today. Stuff has not come out yet, so there's nothing to shill. You don't want to go to. You don't want to go to voice actor jail. No, of course not. I can't. No, God, God, that's not a good feeling. Oh, there's a lot of horror stories. No. I've seen what happens. Not to me personally, but I've seen what happens. It's not good. No. Uh, I made gluten-free cookies last night, and I made salmon soup two mm. days ago. That was fun. Oh, damn. It was Swedish! S not salmon soup? soup? Was it like, did it have like a chowder consistency, or was it like soup soup? No, soup. I mean, I had, a, I had to have cream to it, and by cream, I mean whipping cream, because I could not find a base-ass cream, but I was like, this is close wow. enough, right? <laughs> oh, wow. It yeah, it worked fine. I wasn't trying to put like whip. It, it was unwhipped, so it was just cream, you know. And that sounds delicious. That sounds amazing. Uh, my neighbor gave it the seal of approval. I don't know if Bosco had it yet because I gave him a bunch too. It's called uh, Lohi Keito. I'm trying to sound it out phonetically. What it sounds like. Google just Google Finnish salmon soup. You'll find it. It's pretty easy to find. Excellent. Uh, Monty, where can they find you? You can find me at Monty Glue on Twitter. You can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue. Yesterday, uh, I was the judge for a Final Fantasy XIV glamour competition, which was really fun. Um, and additionally, uh, but, 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 tomorrow, barring anything coming up in my schedule, which has been my life, uh, we're going to be doing more Metopia. Uh, the Dark Lord Bosco has stolen the faces of the villagers of next door, and we need to save them. We've already saved Donkey Kong and Handsome Squidward. My my RPG party consists of myself, uh, oh god, my cat Goblin, Dr. Coomer, and Merrix from Kirby. <laughs> this game is fun. It's like it's like Final Fantasy ad lib, and it's really, really enjoyable. You should come check it out. It's it's a really great time. Um, and yeah, streams are a little weird right now. I will say this, I'll try and announce things on my Twitter, but there's just a lot of stuff kind of showing up in my schedule randomly, like out of nowhere. And I had to kind of stay on top of it. Um, for example, I've been trying to get a haircut for two weeks and I finally found a day where I could do it. That's kind of how crazy things are in the, in, during the day. So, uh, thanks for your guys' patience. Also check out my discord, um, as well. Cause we talk about different stuff and I'm also giving out recruitment codes for final fantasy 14. If you're interested in checking out that game, that's it for me. 
All right. Bosco, where can they find you? What do you have to You can find me at Ed Bosco VA on both Instagram and Twitter and then right here on twitch.tv slash Edward Bosco. Yeehaw. Yeehaw. There we go. Zork. Uh, and of course, they can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube.com slash Distortion Devil. I stream Tuesdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays playing some tabletop simulator. Uh, <laughs> Guilty Gear Strive. Among Us, Yakuza oh. for Remastered. Uh, Wildermyth and the Back for Blood beta, which I think its last day is Monday? Yes, the last day for the beta is Monday, I think. Uh, but this this Sunday, I'll be playing more Wildermyth. Uh, because I, I want to go, I want to get back to that game. As much as I love the Back for Blood beta, I I, I want to get back to Wildermyth. I, I, I want an excuse to play it. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's all happening. Uh, be sure to check out Dead House Sonata. They just released a bunch of new information about basically uh, where they want to take sort of the direction of the game, uh, featuring the one and only Dennis Dyack. Uh, that's up on their Twitch VODs and their YouTube channel right now, uh, youtube.com slash Dead House Sonata. Uh, if you're at all inclined to purchase one of their new Founders Packs, then be sure to follow the link in the chat, which I think... If I just type this. Oh, wait. Is it how Connor, what have you done? Oh. Connor, what have you done? What what have I done? <gasps> Deadhouse Sonata. Our, our official not sponsor, but we like them a lot. Yeah. I can't believe this. Speaking uh, you can find that sponsors. link there. Uh, speaking of sponsors, uh, they can wait until I plug my DMs Guild, uh, which I will be releasing a subclass fairly soon here, the Accursed Fighter. Uh, if you've ever wanted to play as Artorius or Guts, then this is the subclass for you. It is heavily inspired by the Cursed class from Tales of Majael. Uh, very much risk-reward, glass cannony type of fighter. Uh, I hope you'll give it a chance, and it's coming out soon here. Uh, but yeah. Uh, and I'd also like to thank our wonderful sponsor for this episode, who Die Hard Dice. <gasps> Are you ready? I pulled out three beautiful sets of Die Hard Dice, but not the metal dice. I'm actually mixing it up. I'm using the nice plastic polyhedral dice. I have the Dawn set. Uh, and I actually don't know the other names of these other sets, but they're really pretty. There's like a blue and pink one. And then there's the Dawn set. And then there's like this blue and kind of white one. Uh, these are actually my bonus dice I got sent in with my metal dice. And I'm going to be using three sets of these today. Also, uh, I found the forbidden dice. Oh, no. Okay. Yep. yep. I found the forbidden dice. I'm not going to use them today, but I have right. them now. Why so, are actually, I, I myself have a bunch of uh, dice sitting right in front of me. I've got three little three little baggies of uh, nice, nice, cool colored dice. I've got a uh, blue one. I've got sort of a sky blue with a silver inlay. And then I've got purple, a nice I little don't... purple here. I still don't understand why they're forbidden. Because if they I... roll really well. They're my gay dice. They're rainbow dice, Sarah. <laughs> and the last time I used them, bad things happened in the Unexpectables. So I'm not allowed to use them anymore. But Damn. if anyone steps out of line, I can break in case of glass and pull them out. Hot damn. Well, they can find all of that and more. Uh, all these dice and dice accessories at dieharddice.com. And if you use the code UNEXPECTABLES, you can get a 10% off your entire order. And with that out of the way, I think it's time to read off some bits and subs from our wonderful yeah. community here. Therapod Art, thank you for the 17 months. It begins. Hey, we know that guy. Yeah. Knackly Polly, thank you for the 17 months. It's back! <laughs> Jewelry Jelly, thank you for the... Wow, I just realized we were almost two years on this channel. 17 months. Yeah. Oh, damn. Uh, Jewelry Jelly, thank you for the 15 months. Woo-wee! 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 Woo woo it's the Prince Division. Zacho Duo, thank you for the 500 bits. Yay, the cops are back! Wait, shit. The cops are back! Cheese it! Just kneel and think for the 666 bits when we lastly left our officers. Ah! Oathbreaker John, thank you for the. Hey, you changed it. It's Oathbreaker now. Hey. 
Oathbreaker John, thank you for the tier two sub for 17 months. 17 months finally, after 3,000 years, the Prince Division <laughs> has returned with revenge. Wait, isn't our friendly white dragonborn still after uh, being chased after by teens because he's a demon? I have no idea what you're talking about. That never happened. <laughs> Keep the eyes. Okay. Burnout Vaughn, thank you for the 100 bits. I badly need this distraction right now, so I'm especially glad you're all back. Yeah. Uh, Kitty Cat Gundam, thank you for the 81. Uh, no, uh, Kitty Cat Gundam 81, thank you for the eight months. Yeah, more Prince Division. Welcome back, guys. Let's go. Tears of Woo. Mozart, thank you for the 14 months. Fantastic Callum, thank you for the 16 months. Woo, 16 months. Though, dang, this car chase feels like it's been going on for weeks. Must be traffic. <laughs> Chestin 117, thank you for the 14 months. Nay Nay 2021, thank you for the 11 months. Heck yeah, almost a year and right in time for the newest Prince Division. So excited for this episode. Beat that snake bitch. That one dwarf, thank you for the 100 bits. Lettuce. Cabbage. Bring up lettuce. <gasps> Tears of Mozart, thank you for the 10,000 bits. Welcome back. Goodness gracious, thank you so much for your generous donation of bits, Tears of Mozart. Appreciate that greatly. SSF Shadow 101, thank you for the uh, 15 months. I know this is the wrong stream, but Connor, can you thank Mr. Rabbit for his accent? It's been helping me get my southern accent back. Southern? He's from Ohio. That's not terribly far south. Might be talking gateway. Ah, yes. Gateway, yeah. Uh... He's got a bit of a southern accent there. Yeehaw. Don't call me stupid, Bosco. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I will certainly thank him next time I talk to him. Sergeant Tucker, thank you for the 100 bits. Resting from my very first convention. Legs hurt like hell, but guess what? I have these sick ass, uh, sick as hell. Uh, EE3 Blaster from Star Wars. Ooh. Interesting. Make sure to drink a lot of vitamin C. You don't want to get con crud. It's true. Yeah. Uh, Glycerius, thank you for the 17 months. Ah, yes, the ongoing crime drama of the RCHWPDPD, the Rampoon City Heavens Ward Police Department Prince Division. Or... <laughs> Oh, God, music. <laughs> oh, what? I didn't know how much I needed that. It's been well, utter silence for me for, like, the whole time. I don't know why I oh, clicked on it. Oh, like, yeah, you needed, you needed to click onto the tab. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, music. God, it was so quiet. This is just, like, mm, awkward. Mm. Uh... Alk27, Alk27, thank you for the 13 months. My name is pronounced ALK27, by the way, Connor. I remember you going, what the fuck, last time you read it, and just say the letters individually. Uh, <laughs> gotcha. I'll be sure to do that from now on, Alk54. Alk um, you are such a jerk. You <laughs> are such a jerk. Thank you thank you, you are the... so ALK64. <laughs> uh, Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Laganza, thank you for these seven bits. Uh, Axis Azriel, thank you for the four months. Four months, God, barely feels like that after watching everything from episode one. Oh, that's a lot of content. And now I'm here watching it live. Love you guys. Uh, keep going. Keep me from drowning in my anxious despair. We'll try. Pretty Venus, uh, thank you for the 104 bits. I drank some homemade iced coffee and it was good. Ooh. Yum. Erwin Elf, thank you for the 1,000 bits. Time for fun with the fuzz. Alone Armadillo, thank you for the 100 bits. Big Bad Shadow Man, thank you for the 17 months. 17 months. Medusa fighting tips, just carry a really big mirror. Gotcha. Night Allen 11, thank you for the six months. Ooh, ooh what's this? Six months? Ooh. God Thanks. damn it. Thanks for that, Night Allen. Uh, Robert's nephew, thank you for the 
400 bits. I really need this today. My state is in Australia. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Oh, and it's seventh week of lockdown. That's even worse. Thanks for all you do. Blackfoot Ferret, thank you for the elite bits, the eight bit hype. Flustered Bun, thank you for the 200 bits. Prince Division, it's been so long. I've missed you guys, although it's only been since Wednesday. Very excited for today's episode. Also, hi, Arkolf and Sarah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, Colin, Colin Litzinger, thank you for the two months. Free Shivakadu, thank you for gifting a tier one sub to Mini Sama. Korean Solist. Corin Solist. Uh, thank you for the 10 months. Wow, 10 months. Time flies. Thanks, guys, for all the laughs and helping me through my ADHD and autism diagnosis. Now seeing a therapist and highly recommend it if you can get it. I know how that feels, dude. The PK, awesome. Thank you for the 14 months. Eurobeat intensifies. <laughs> Lexi wait. Luna, thank you for the 200 bits. Hey, everyone. Hope you all have better than average rolls tonight. Me too. Uh, handsome robot. Thank you for the five thousand bits. Hey, finally caught up. Uh, finally caught an episode live and wanted to share the love. You make my graveyard shifts go by so much faster. Hey, there you go. Dice ruler. Thank you for the two hundred bits. Hey guys, glad you're back. Can't wait for this episode. Uh, Doctor Quactopus. Thank you for the prime <laughs> sub. <laughs> Stellar Coyote. Thank you for the one hundred bits. Oh man, I need to fix. I'm itching for something bad, man. Uh, Let's not uh, compare dire dice to drugs. Yeah. Fun drugs. Yeah. Thank you for we the bits, we, though. Yeah, we appreciate the bits, though. Oathbreaker John, thank you for the 100 uh, bits. As the gang arrived at the station, our friendly white dragonborn has seen his summoners filing a report about a demon they summoned. Oh, that is so weird. He sounds just like me. Ooh. <laughs> what a goinky dink. Crafty demons. <laughs> uh, Zen Lita, thank you for the 300 bits. Uh, a baby roach asks his father what happened if they get sprayed with raid. Papa Roach says, suffocation, no breath. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I need a second to recover from that. <laughs> you're okay, Connor. You're okay. I'm gonna grab some water while you're reading off bits. Uh huh. I missed this gaggle of weirdos. Welcome back. Thank you for the 300 bits, Zen Lita. Luca the Lucas, thank you for the 100 bits. These bits uh, are to remind you you are all awesome. Yes, you too, Bosco. Thank you for making my nights better. Night Allen 11, thank you for the five bits. S sorry, Monty, your reaction to my uwu message is just too funny. And finally. Not too many furries, it hurts me. <laughs> finally, two kobolds in a trench coat. Thank you for the two months of Prime Subbage. Welcome back, Prince Division. Oh, and while she's gone, let's I'm go here. Ahead and read this one off. Uh, well, we got one more from Fantastic Callum. Thank you for the 100 bits. Would a golden dragonborn who harvests crops for harvest reasons. Would they be a dragon corn? Uh, boo? <laughs> Maybe if they had a singular horn in their forehead. Uh, I came up with a Prince Division pun, but it's very stupid and I don't know if it's been used. Please do go on. Oh, really? Yes, I, will see I wish to hear it. Oh no, <laughs> go, go for it, Sarah. Feel him. If we if we stopped police work and became experts at Jewish pancakes, we'd be the Blintz division. Huh. Ah, see, he likes it. <laughs> I'm vindicated. I don't know well, what that is, so I will accept <laughs> it regardless. Uh, all right, let's play D and D. Yay! Yay! All right. So. Look, Bosco, if you want to give my pun shit, you better come on mic and do it. So, when last we left our officers, you guys have been following the case and the murder of Cody Mason 
After finding a trail of leads that had led you to a sculpture artist of the Devil Demon Ward, you guys attended a party hosted by what you soon discovered was a Medusa. As you guys had infiltrated the party, looking through Ziara sculptures and ceramics, looking for any evidence to find anything related to this weird, strange mission that this individual might be having, you guys were caught out in your disguises and through a well-placed command spell, managed to make your way out of the estate and into your vehicle to try and escape the pursuit of both a stone chimera and the various attendees of this party. And as you guys all roll up into the car, slam the door shut, and rev the engine, I need everybody to roll initiative for me. Oh, God. Uh, and Marjorie, remind me if you've given me back my Tides of Chaos. You have it still, I believe. All right, so I know what I'm working with here. All That's right. That's 3.1. It's Saturday, all right. Four. Nice. Oh, God damn it. And we need Brian. And I'll get the music started once I write down the initiative order here. All right. We'll use the Chimera's initiative. Bryant? 13. 13. Okay. Let's see, Tannis. Okay. And then we have. We have Gibby. And we have Kel. So. As you guys pile up into the car and immediately take off, who is driving? I need to know who is driving. I'm assuming it's Tannis. Yeah. <laughs> Tannis. Best dad! All, right. All right. And here comes our music. I got some new music Ooh. today. Shit. So. To be fair, when last we left off, Tannis <laughs> was the one starting the ignition. Yeah. So, makes sense he'd be driving. All right. So... Whoa. Oh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> As you guys rev down and head out for a bonus action, I need a driving check for me from you, Tannis. Okay. Would that just be survival? Uh, that would be survival, yes. Here I go. Uh, Let me know. Come on, how, does, how does stuff like guidance and stuff work in this situation? Uh, it, this is because we're in turn order. It takes an action to, to cast. So unfortunately... Uh, well, Kel cannot cast. It. Yeah. No, 22? 22? You're fine. You slam down and immediately take off the engine screaming under your foot as you guys take off. And immediately, as you turn behind you, who's in the back seat? I need no positions here. So we have, we have... Kel is in the back seat. Okay. And then who's in the front seat with uh, Tannis? <sighs> um, I got in with him probably, so I think I am. All right, so we have because Tannis Kel and, and Kel and Bryant didn't join till later. All right, yep. and then we have Kel and Bryant in the back seat. All right, Kel, you're in the left side, the left seat. Bryant, you're in the right seat. So Tannis, as you take off screaming and driving, the rest of you guys kind of knock your heads out and you look behind you. You see a group of about uh, four goblins getting into a car, a group of four drow getting into a car and a group of humans of various descriptors, about five of them getting into another vehicle. These are very nice sports cars, and you can see as they rev to life and come after you. The chimera that got commanded kind of shakes its head and is looking towards you now. Brian, uh, Tannis, it is still your turn. That was your bonus action to do a driving check. You have your action and your movement. Everyone's movement is tied to the car unless you try and move like out of the car or do something crazy for obvious reasons. Uh, okay. So I, I see the the goblins and stuff getting into their cars as well. Yeah, you see all of them getting into their cars. They're in a very big hurry to chase after you. All right, I I, I reach towards my hip and I pull out my gun. Okay. <laughs> and and I'm going to try and shoot their tires out. Okay, go ahead and roll to shoot with disadvantage because you're really far away at this point. Oh, I'm really far away at this point. Yeah. Uh, could I hold my action and wait until they get closer? Sure, then? absolutely. All right, yeah, I'll do that. Okay. I'm, assuming that, that I'm assuming that means my extra attack doesn't go off for that. No, it'd be a single attack. That's fine. That brings us around to Bryant. It is now your turn as you take off the kick of the vehicle, kind of knocking you forward on your chest, assuming you guys aren't wearing your seatbelts. 
Um, Ryan, it is now your turn. Uh, I'd like to full defense, and that'll be my turn. All right. You kind of just put your hands over your head and kind of keep your head down. That ends your turn. It is now the enemy's turn. The drow needs to make a driving check. Pretty good. The drow rev off. You see that one guy who you who tried to stop you, Kel, uh, appears to be in the shotgun seat, so the the passenger side seat. Oh, and as a rev, bullied. damn, I thought yeah. he popped off. No, he's there now. I thought he was done with our shit. All right. He's so done that he's he's getting in the car and he's initiated again. That's fine. I'll bully him more. Also, do let me know if the music's too loud as well. That this music's is like, fine. This is what I said about Guitar Man level five. It is legit like being dropped into that fucking level. All right. The driver, the drow who's driving the car, leans out of the window uh, and holds up a hand crossbow and is going to aim it towards uh, Bryant. Because Bryant is actually, who's on the left side? Kel is on the left. Kel. So it's going to be aimed at Kel. I have so many books out right now. Oh, that's a really high roll. Uh, that's gonna be a 22 to hit you. Oh, yeah, that does hit. Oh, never mind. He caught up with you. These guys took off driving and they passed a driving check to catch up with you guys. All right. That is going to be. Wait, Monty. Yeah? If they caught up with us, why didn't Tana's shot go off? Oh, yeah, right, you shot. Well, you're aiming, you're aiming for the goblins, though. This is the drow car. For... Ah, I see. Yeah, yeah. So the drow go first. The goblins are after the drow, though, so just so right. you're in there. Uh, that is going to be five points of piercing damage. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw for me. Kel? That is 17. You uh, you get shot in the back of your shoulder, and the back windshield of the car shatters. Glass just sprays across you, Bryant and Kel, as you guys kind of lean forward. And Kel, you have a bolt in your shoulder, and as you reach and you rip it out, you notice that the front of it is actually dripping out this kind of deep midnight purple color. Clearly poison, but you've managed to resist it, and you kind of break it, and you kind of throw it aside. That is the driver's shot. The drow gentleman who you've been pestering this entire time is going to also level a shot towards... Let's flip a coin here. Who's he more angry with, me or Bryant? He's going to aim for Bryant. He doesn't know who is who right now because you guys are, you know, in a car. So he's just aiming at whoever the closest target is. So he's going to aim for you, Bryant, because you are directly in front of him with a hand crossbow. That is extremely sad. That's a 10. That's completely going to miss. As he fires the crossbow, it shatters on the metal frame of the car. You hear and see the sound of some of the drow in the back seat of the car kind of coming out as well and also loading shots into hand crossbows and aiming as well. First shot on Kel. Uh, that is going to be a 16 to hit you, Kel. That misses. Okay. Another one fires and misses. And the last shot, which is going to be for uh, Brian, is again, really bad roll. Uh, that is going to be an 11, which completely misses. So the drow are, are directly behind you at the moment. The goblins take off. They have like a almost kind of hearse kind of like style car. Are they the uh. anthill mob? I don't know what that means, so I don't know how to answer. Oh, it was a wacky racers reference. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the goblins rip out of their parking spot and drive up right next to you. And Tannis, you have a clear shot. Go ahead and roll the hit. With no disadvantage. Who are you aiming for? There are currently in the car, there are four goblins. There's the driver, shotgun, back left, and roof. I'm shooting got, up the tires. I got your reference, Arkov, and I appreciate you. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead and roll the hit. Okay. The AC of the car is quite high. Pow! Uh, 19? 19 just hits. Woo! All right, and as you aim the shot, you shoot it out. You hear eh, like a screeching noise, and you see the driver kind of recontrolling. The driver has disadvantage on his next driving check. So I'm going to put 
disadvantage. All right, but it is now the Goblin's turn, and they are up next. The driver, uh, I will say... Hmm. Do any of you guys speak Goblin? Does anybody have Goblin as a language on their character sheet? Mm -mm. Nope. I don't believe so. All right. There's a lot of screaming going on in that vehicle right now. The driver is going to take his action to give himself advantage on his driving check, which means he's going to cancel out the disadvantage, but it means he doesn't get an attack. The goblin in the passenger's side stands up and brings out a bow and kind of leans out of the window, aiming a shot towards you, Tannis. Okay. Oh my god, these guys are rolling so poorly. Ah, uh, that's a 10 to hit you. That does not hit. As he shoots, the arrow actually goes through the, like, the, the steering wheel and, like, crashes into the console. Luckily, nothing breaks, but it is pretty close. The <clears throat> back, back left goblin... Uh, is going to attempt to aim a shot with disadvantage because he's on the opposite side. Or actually, you know what? He's going to make an acrobatics check to try and jump on top of the roof of your guys' car. <laughs> and he rolls a natural one. Oh, 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 oh my god! That guy's going to die! <laughs> As the goblin climbs on top of the roof, he slips on top of the roof, and you just see him disappear, and you just see him hanging on, <laughs> like, the back bumper of the car. Oh, he's the being dragged? Oh, God, he's being grounded at pace. Yeah, his knees are, like, bloody and red right now. It's awful, oh. and he's screaming. Uh, just let go, dude. God. If he lets go, he'll be run over by the cars behind us. Exactly. And if he doesn't let go, he's going to be grounded to pulp. I've seen this movie. Gibby, as you adjust the mirror to the right of you, you look and you see the roof of the Goblin Mobile. There's a sunroof that is opening, and you see coming up, dressed to the nines, the Goblin Leader cocking back a crossbow. Oh, and he is going to aim a shot at Tannis as well. Oh, God. Natural 20. Oh, fuck. Doubles. That is going to be... Tannis, you take 10 points of piercing damage to your shoulder. Deflect as the methods. goblin... Okay. 10 points of damage, so you have to go ahead and... 1d10 roll, plus my dexterity modifier. Oh, come on, lucky roll. <laughs> well, I reduce oh. it by five. Okay, so you take five points of damage. You kind of like, you, you bring up your hand to try and stop it. You manage to catch it, but it still hits you right kind of near the clavicle of the neck, but nowhere to be lethal enough. <sighs> you watch as the goblin boss kind of, and then recocks the crossbow and aims another shot. That is the goblin car. The bandit mobile needs to drive. Damn track. it, there's a lot of guys. Oh yeah. You guys just stepped into the den of a lot of bad people and 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 running from them at the moment. Uh driving check is good. The bandit mobile kind of pulls up to the right side slightly behind. The driver is actually going to forego his attack to give advantage on his next driving check to do and maneuver. The person riding in shotgun stands up. I did not tab out my bandits. Why did I not do that? One second. There they are. This way it pulls out a light crossbow, Gibby, and he's going to aim it at you at disadvantage because you're on the opposite side. And seeing how the other goblin tried to climb across the roof of the vehicle and it did not end well, he does not want to attempt that. Okay. Uh, absolutely tragic. That is going to be a five, which misses you completely, but it does shatter the, the mirror okay. to the right of you. Uh, I keep in mind also, because I have it, I still have Mage Armor off, because that lasts yeah. eight hours. Absolutely, yeah. The back right bandit is going to aim a shot as well towards you, Gibby. That is going to be a 13 to hit. That misses with my, what, not, I'm, I, I'm AC 15 right now. Right, you're good. You watch as you duck behind, and it actually hits like the the back cushion of your, uh, like the headrest of the car. 
back left. Uh, is going to aim a shot at Bryant. Uh, that is going to be a 18 to hit you, Bryant. You full defense, though. I did. That misses anyway. All right. You bring up your head and you just manage. You just feel the whizzing of the arrow strike past. And another sunroof is going to open as a very grizzled looking scarred up human man brings up a heavy crossbow. And he's going to aim that at you, Gibby. Yeah. That is going to be uh, plus. That's going to be a 17 to hit you, Gibby. That hits. All right. One second. Oh, come on, dude. Four points of piercing damage to you. All right. All the one. As it strikes you in the arm and just kind of takes you off your kilter. The Chimera at this point shakes the command spell, snarls, and takes off after you guys. It is about probably 10 feet back behind the drow car at the moment, keeping pace. That brings us around to Gibby. It is now your turn. Okay. So now the Chimera is up with pace, right? It is not up with pace. It is probably, compared to you guys, probably about 30 to 20 feet away at the moment. But I would be able to hit without disadvantage? Yes. If you lean out of the car, you absolutely can. And can I hit all the drivers without disadvantage? Uh, the only driver you could not hit would be the goblin driver because they are on the opposite side to where you are currently. So for, for image, your car is in the middle. The goblins are to the left of you. The bandits are to the right. The drow are directly behind you. So in terms of a shot, you have uh, no disadvantage on the bandits. You would have disadvantage on the drow and disadvantage on the goblins. I roll. If I aim for the cars, would I have disadvantage? The cars themselves, I will say this, will probably not garter any outcome besides giving penalties to the driver. Just to make mechanically ma right. mechanically make things make sense, unfortunately. Ugh. All right. Scorching Ray, level three. One, okay. for each, one for each car, one for the Chimera. Okay, what, what individual are you aiming for in the car? Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter with the dis disadvantage, right? So I'll aim for the drivers every time. Uh, with the drow, if you aim for people on the right side, it is not with disadvantage because they're with an eye shot of you. Anyone on the left side would be with disadvantage, so... You could aim for the person in shotgun, the, the main drow guy, if you wanted to, without disadvantage. Yeah, All the, the goblins... Are... Huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, God, sucks. I'd rather aim for the drivers, though, because they're the ones that okay. control the car. You want to um, aim one for the bandit driver, I'm assuming. So I only have one undisadvantaged roll on the drivers? You would have two. You'd have, if you're aiming for the drow driver, you'd have disadvantage because he's not within perfect eye shot of you and the goblin is completely on the other side, so you'd also have disadvantage. It's possible to do it, it's just very difficult. Um, okay, okay, okay. Let's, yeah, all right, then, then, Whoever, I want the driver I can get without disadvantage. I forget which one you said that was. Mm -hmm. The bandit one. And then I guess for the other two cars, I'll take aim for whoever I can get with advantage as well. Okay. It's not with advantage, it's a straight roll. Oh, yeah, so yeah, go, yeah. Ahead. Straight, straight yeah. go ahead and roll your first uh, Scorching Ray on the bandit driver. Okay. Here we go. 11. Ooh. Misses. As you kind of lean out of the car, kind of holding on to the headrest, you kind of coreless your hand and you shoot out a scorching ray. It shatters the windshield of the driver. You're like, shit, right, windshield. That's your first scorching ray. Number two. Same and target. What? No, whoever in a different car who I can hit with plenty. Right. You kind of lean back and you aim for the drow and shotgun and you kind of throw it out and you think you hit him, but you shatter his windshield as well. You're like, ugh. God, give me one. Thirteen. 13 for the goblin. Unfortunately, does not hit. You throw another one and you shatter another windshield. Everyone's windshields right now, except for your car, is now broken. 
But unfortunately, none of those hit because their ACs were too high. I'm so sorry, Sarah. Number four. 17 for the Chimera. 17 for the Chimera. That just hits, I believe. Let me double check that. Yep, that just hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay. Now, is it going to account for the fact I'm doing level four or level three? It, that's how many you get more scorching rays based off of that, not damage. Oh. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Three fire. Okay. All right, you strike back and you strike the chimera that is now in the air. It is now, you like hit it in the mouth and the, like the flames kind of flicker past the jaws. And the rest of you guys, as you kind of turn around and look, you can now see its kind of face ignited with this flame briefly. Um, fuck it. I'm gonna use quick spell and cast chaos bolt on that one driver I can't hit normal. Uh, you already casted a spell with Scorching Ray. You can't cast a second spell even with Quicken Spell. It'd be Cantrip and then Spell. Then Firebolt. Okay. You mean for the same driver? Yeah. All right, go ahead and roll Firebolt. And with a Cantrip, that's only one sorcery point, right? Yes. All right, let me put that back up again. And... We'll just reverse it and say you casted Scorching Ray with a bonus slot, and then this is your action, just to make it easier. So Firebolt, so I'm rolling Firebolt. Yep. Uh, firebolt, go. not fireball. Firebolt. <laughs> oh, if I had fireball, wow. All uh, right, here we go. Oh wait, that was a level four, so I should take level three spell, so I should take that slot off instead. All right, firebolt. Twenty-two. Come on. That, that hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Eleven. Ooh. You watch as you're driving, Tannis. You see Gibby just like ah, and then she coalesces the biggest firebolt you've ever seen her like summon. And Gibby, you throw that thing like a baseball right through the broken windshield, immediately taking the man's head off in the driver's seat. The car. Oh, oh God. Wait, I didn't get to decide oh, if it was not lethal. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. These guys aren't great He's people, a criminal. Who to gives be a fuck? fair. They're, and also, for context, you are in the Demon Devil Ward. There is no law here, technically. So is he dead? Oh yeah, he's super dead. You yeah, super killed him. Oh my god! Oh, he's driving. What happens to the car? The car veers to the right, and you watch as now the the person who is in the sunroof immediately like grabs down the car and says, "Get control of it!" And they kind of veer off and crash into some uh, garbage bins. They have yes! disadvantage on their next driver's check, and that takes someone out of the fight. Okay, that was not great, but that sort of helped. Oh, uh, cool. yeah, then that's me. All right, Kel, it is now your turn. <laughs> Hope that's good, Kel. What do you got? Oh, Monty. Mm-hmm. I've got a mechanical question for you. Mm-hmm. So if I were to say use command on the drow driver and tell him to flee, it says the target spins its turn moving away from you by the fastest available means, which would be their car. So it would, would make him work? stop, unfortunately. That would mean he would put on the gas because that would be a turn worth of movement. So what would that do? That would be a, so the thing is with command, he can't endanger himself. So if he were to turn suddenly, he would, he would flip the car. So instead what he would do is he would hit the gas. So he would stop essentially. You would get him to stop for a turn oh, and so he'd make distance. Break. That's what would happen, yeah, based off of the spell. Just to give you context so you're not disappointed, but that would be what would happen because if he were to turn and like do like a, like a U-turn, it's too dangerous. He would consider it a life risk and he wouldn't do it because with the spell, you can't make them do something that would risk their life. Ah. Six, six seconds at the speed we're going is, is pretty good. They'll get pretty far away. You can use command on the drow driver. I'm debating between that and blindness deafness. If I render him blind, they'll probably crash too. <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. Let's see if we can make the drow driver blind. Okay. It's a constitution saving throw, I believe. Yeah, DC 14. My DC saves are miserable. 11. He fails. So oh, he's blind Ooh. now. For the next the... minute. Yeah, he's blind now. Whoo. He can repeat the saving throw, though. Mm -hmm. But you watch as, like, the drow driver, like, kind of is maintaining pace. And you hear him scream out, I can't see! I can't see! And the drow vehicle, you watch as panic kind of begins with them. Hey, Monty. Uh-huh. As free action, can I wave to the one I bullied? Roll an intimidation. Wave. Roll an, just roll an intimidation check. I just, you know, just to see. Oh. His reaction 12. here. 
You see, he like stands up, looks down at his driver, whose eyes, like these kind of pearl white eyes are now just black orbs in their head. And he kind of <laughs> and turns over to you and you kind of give him a wave and he's just like, <laughs> and cocks the, the crossbow. The <laughs> oh, I'm going to keep fucking with them so right. much. Why do you do these things? That end your turn, Cal? That is sadly all I can do. Tannis, bonus action driving check. As you see now, as there is more traffic appearing ahead of you, there are other cars now coming into the scene. Civilian oh. cars. Hold on to your hats, people. Uh, 12. 12. Literally, it was exactly what you needed. Okay. That's good. As you manage to, it. like you guys get jerked around in the back seat and all the glass gets shifted around. You guys manage to duck and weave around the other vehicles and do not have a collision or damage your vehicle in any way or slow your pace. You guys keep a maintained pace. Tannis, it is okay, still good. your turn. You have an okay. action. I see, uh, is that human with the cross with a heavy crossbow still out there? He is, but he's on your opposite side. He's on your right side and you are on the left side of the vehicle, unfortunately. Ah. You have, you have clear view of the goblins, and you have clear view, if you turn around completely, of the drow driver and the drow on the left side. Hmm. I don't know the, chimeras in the, chi the chimeras in the air and is a clear shot for all of you, by the way, just for context. Uh, hmm. Do I wanna Do I wanna hazard the disadvantage on my gun? It's gonna do a lot of damage, but hmm. Uh... Uh... Fuck it, let's shoot out some more tires. All right. Uh, so just whatever whatever tires that I I haven't shot out yet, I will I will aim for those. Okay, aim for the goblin, the drow, or the bandit vehicle. I think I already shot the goblin one, so I'll aim for the bandit vehicle. Okay, disadvantage because it's on the opposite side. Fair enough. Fuck. Uh, well, if I have disadvantage anyway. Would I, would I not have disadvantage on the draw vehicle? Uh, no, actually, you would, you would you would have a normal roll for the draw vehicle. Okay, I'll go for the draw vehicle then. Okay. Here we go. Yep. Uh, 20 rain. That hits. As you lean out after dodging all those cars, you aim a shot, not only wanting to hit a pedestrian vehicle, and you manage to bang, bang shoot, and already... The draw that was blind was keeping a pace by just like, okay, if I just keep driving straight, I'm fine. The moment you knock out the tires, immediately the car swerves, the driver's blind, very hard DC check, and they have disadvantage now on their next check. Ah, uh, but, uh, but I'm not done yet. <laughs> uh, I, I have an extra attack. You sure do. And uh, fuck it, I'll aim a shot at the human dude. Okay. Why not? Here we go. With disadvantage. That is going to be an 18 still. You lock the gun and you aim the shot. I'm assuming you're aiming at the... Uh, the you're human aiming with the heavy car. crossbow. The human with the heavy crossbow? That hits. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. This does... A pitiful seven piercing damage. Uh, it is not resistant, so if, if this is being rolled with resistance, which I don't think it is. Humans, uh, aren't, humans aren't resistant to pistol damage. They are not. They are completely normal to guns. That is seven points of damage. You shoot him in the chest. <laughs> and he, he like, kind of groans and grabs his side. You hit him pretty hard. All right, Tannis, is that in your turn? I believe so, yes. All right, Brian, as you look out to the left side of the vehicle, you see a group of goblins. They've somewhat lost control of their vehicle, but they seem to be maintaining pace. 
The humans on the right side are kind of careening off as they lost their driver. And the drow looks like it's about to go into a slide, but we'll see what happens on their turn. But it is your turn, Bryant. Which car was the one that was making the maneuvers? Uh, the goblin car, which is immediately to the left of you. And they got fucked up, right? They currently have a goblin being dragged behind the vehicle, but they are oh, keeping God. pace and have the best control over their car right now gonna, compared to Con the two. Connor never used his movement. And I was going to say, Monty's probably going to try to spin you out so that they can make the car stop and use the numbers game. Can he use his movement to counter that? <clears throat> no, he already made the driving check to keep pace up ahead, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're about to get fucked then. Uh, I'm going to full defense. Okay, you're going to full defense. That brings us around to the enemy's turn. So, starting with the goblins, just a straight roll to equate out the disadvantage. Okay, they pass. They maneuver around the other vehicles. And the goblin is going to attempt to make a competing driving check against you, Tannis. Okay. So I need you to make a survival check, and the goblin will also make a survival check as well. Alrighty. Tides of chaos. Oh, you have thank you. Thank you very much. The goblins rolled a 16. That'll be a 22. Nice. As the goblins come in to Thank ram you. the vehicle, you manage to just kind of put your foot, you, you hit the brakes and slide back and the goblin smashes into another car. They are now also on the right side ahead of you. Give you a perfect visual on them. All right, and I roll 1d100? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say yeah, roll 1d100 for me. Here we go. Give you back 65. Your I think we've had this one multiple times. Yeah, why do I feel like I've seen this roll before? <laughs> Please don't be the one I'm thinking of, because that would not work out well for us. Gibby. Yeah. Pick three creatures in this situation. <gasps> oh my god! I remember this one! Holy shit! Holy sh Okay, okay, okay. Mmm. Mmm. And do I have a disadvantage on anything? I can aim at anyone I want. You can pick any creature that you can see. Can I see everybody? You can, yes. Everything is within 30 feet of you. All three drivers. All three drivers. Okay. I would like for you to roll 4d10 lightning damage for me, Gibby. Oh, I remember this! Oh my god! Okay. Oh, fuck. Uh, four. Roll. Roll. Sorry. Okay. Got it. Was saying. I'm fine. I'm fine. Roll. Four. D10s. Here we go. Oh, my hand is shaking. <laughs> that was the luckiest <laughs> wild Here magic go. roll. Here we go. Wow. 25! That is a lot of damage. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Oh. Gibby, as- I'm lightheaded right now. As Tannis <laughs> swerves, like hits the brakes, you lurch forward and your shoulder gets hurt and something just swells inside of you. And just coalescing outside comes this flash of arcane magic as three individual thunderbolts blast through the top of each car and each driver is completely eviscerated oh god and that counts for because i already took the head off one of them so this is for the one that tried to take control of the car correct uh yeah technically yes uh oh that god. was actually the and he's dead too wow yeah oh my god i've killed so many people <laughs> there are no people in the the front the front section of the car with the humans in it is just like it looks like they had a head-on collision the goblin driver is exploded and there's tons of screaming and the drow driver who was already blinded and had no idea what was going on and lost a tire is just eviscerated instantly oh my fucking god i didn't was there any way to roll non-lethal on that oh god no that's lightning oh. damage you exploded them and you All can't right, control so... that you have no control over that so so in one session my body count is now four. Yep. I just capped. I, I, I no one else has my body count. I capped you all. That was oh. a that was a lucky wild magic roll. I'll say that much. Oh. But oh my god, we're still not out of it yet, as it is still technically the goblins' turn. Panic ensues. Hello. Shotgun Goblin, who is alive, is going to take up the driver's seat as his action. Did you not see what I did to your guy? Leave! They're persistent. They're goblins. All right. 
back left, seeing what you did, Gibby, is going to aim a shot towards you. Fun. Uh, it's gonna be a 23 to hit, natural nice Yeah, 20. that hits. All right. Uh, that is going to be six points of piercing damage to you, Gibby. As they scream out something and goblin at you, and they <laughs> fire a shot at you and hit you in the shoulder. The, <laughs> the poor goblin that's being dragged behind. Uh, he's going to attempt an athletics to climb back up. He is still being dragged. He rolled a five. Dude, you're dead oh, by no. now! And Just that ends. Your kids with the car. That ends their turn. Uh, the bandits have lost complete control of the vehicle. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say, someone roll for me a D100. If it's over 20, they crash and are out of the fight. Uh, who wants it? Hey, I rolled it. Go for it. One D100. That's four. Yeah! You watch as the guy on the roof kind of scrambles over. He actually jumps off the vehicle as the vehicle crashes into a cement building and is completely removed from this encounter. Mm. The drow, who have lost their driver, uh, the drow elite warrior is going to take his action to take up the driver's seat. <gasps> Holy buddy. He he looks like you know Corella Deville in the cartoon movie yep. <laughs> where she's like she's going after those Dalmatians. That is currently the state of the drow right now. Oh, I can't wait until my turn. He is gonna maneuver the car so the two drow in the back seat can get better shots. One is gonna shoot towards you, Bryant. Okay. Oh my god, I keep rolling 19s on this dice. Uh, that is going to be a 23 to hit you, Brian. That's with disadvantage. Uh, they re-maneuvered, so they have a better shot I, at you. I full defense to roll it again. Right. You were correct, sorry. Terrible! Completely misses. That's a four, so... You're welcome. Get out of my house with that weak shit. <laughs> the drow on the sunroof is going to aim a shot towards you, Kel. <laughs> that is going to be a 22 to hit. Natural 18. That hits. All right. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. That's an A. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. Kind of bad. You take four, uh, four points of piercing damage. And you are now unconscious as you've been poisoned. Oh. Yep. Well, so just much for my turn. You, Cal, you just, boom, you collide in the front. Bryant, Cal is entirely unconscious. Drow poison is no joke. It, it, it fucking hurts. That brings us to the Chimera's turn. To be fair, I will consider that karma for bullying him. Yeah, kind of is in a way. I didn't tab up my Chimera. Tannis, I need you to make a competing survival check for me. Oh, uh, here we go. Um. um tides of Chaos. Oh boy. Okay. I appreciate it. You I'm might not. not. I'm taking it. I'm taking it away from you this time. You're not getting it back. That's a fifteen. Fifteen. Still better than my eight. So it ties. Aggressor wins. Damn it! But because it tied, I'm gonna make it not as bad. You guys who are inside of the vehicle, Kelly, you're unconscious when this happens. You watch as the roof of the car just crunches inwards about a foot in as the chimera lands on top of the vehicle. Uh, it is going to take a claw attack against you, Tannis. Okay. That is going to be a 20 to hit. That hits. Okay. Oh, terrible rolls, come on. 
That is going to be seven points of slashing damage to you as the claws reach inside like a cat looking for a mouse and like grip your chest and you manage to kind of put your feet back and hold yourself as this thing is trying to rip you from the car, but you need to keep driving. That ends the enemy's turn. Gibby, it is now your turn. I have a poison potion. If I force that down Kel's throat, will that wake him up? You don't know, but you can try. Mm. And that's not a spell, so I can't use that as a quick spell bonus action, correct? The po- the potion, no. But you can administer potions as a bonus action. Oh, I can. Yeah. All right, fuck that then. Uh, all right then. Uh, uh, what's the layout again? I know the chimera is on the, the car. One car is gone. Yeah, one car is gone. You currently have the goblins to the right of you, Gibby, and you have the drow vehicle immediately behind you, keeping pace. Right. Uh, Scorching Ray, level three. Okay, level, who are you yeah, level three. Who are you aiming for? Ooh. Let's do one for the driver of the car to the right, because I can hit that without it with advantage okay. without its advantage. Um, two for the driver of the drow car, if someone start, decides to take up or whatever I can do with that. Okay. And can I hit the chimera without disadvantage? The chimera's on the roof, technically within five feet, so it would be with disadvantage because it's within melee range. Well, didn't he rip the roof off? No, he's just on top of the roof. He's like pulling into um, the window at me. Yeah, that's. I'll, t- I'll take it, I guess. <sighs> yeah, one for him. Okay. Okay. So, first one against the goblin driver. Right. Natural oh. 20. Okay. Go ahead and roll damage. Third, uh, four, 12. 12 fire damage. That is a dead ass goblin. He is gone. There is no one in the front seat of the goblin vehicle now. Here we go. Now with disadvantage for the drow driver. 12. 12 does not hit, unfortunately. This drow in particular, he's he's got armor on. He is not your everyday customer. He kind of leans down and shoulders the fire and just kind of, he's staring daggers right now at that back seat. Here we go again. 16. 16, unfortunately, does not hit either. Oh. And for the Chimera. 15. 15 does not hit the Chimera either. I'm so sorry. And for my bonus action, I'm going to force feed Kel that poison wait, potion. Wait, the Chimera's on the roof. Why does she have disadvantage? Because it's within melee range. And it's a range spell. Yeah. You've got to be kidding me. 5e. That's 5e, baby. There are feats that remove that penalty, I believe. But anyway, yeah, bonus action. I'm going to force feed Kel that poison potion. Okay. Kel, as you, you're you having the most wonderful dream about food and hanging out with your good friends. And then suddenly you can't breathe and you <laughs> wake up drinking the poison potion. You've been jostled awake. I will allow that because that is a poison potion to be administered and Kel, you are conscious again. Your health Wait, has not what? changed. Wait, yeah. Wait. You feel a little woozy. Uh, you are not poisoned any longer. You are fine. The food is gone. Kel, stay with us, okay? As you look to the side, you see leaning in to the car a dragon's head from the chimera just kind of peering at you, and the tail is lashing and whipping behind. Uh, that's all I got. All right, Kel, it is now your turn. Can I see the drow driver? You can, yes. Yeah, a hold person. Okay. And still DC 14, but wisdom this time. Wisdom saving throw. Oh my god, he's got a really, he actually has proficiency at nine. He fails, he's held person. Ooh. He's paralyzed. Cannot move, can't do shit. All right. I'm driving. 
I might add. Mm-hmm. And I hate it, because the next sequence is going to probably fuck him over. All right. Cool. That's your action. What do you want to do for your bonus action? Hmm. What am I born this action? Um, uh, I'm actually going to drink a healing potion. I okay. have a few of those. 2d4 plus 2. Don't drink and dive, kids. <laughs> I'm not driving. I mean the passenger seat. <laughs> oh, oh, Max. Nice. nice. That actually pushed me back to Max. <laughs> and that's my turn. All right, that brings us around top of the turn order. Tannis, as you're driving, you watch as the road ahead of you stops and is only turn left or turn right. Yeah. And as you guys are as you guys are driving, you hear the radio that has been shot kind of spit and crackle, and you hear a voice, a familiar voice. I'm gonna say, give you roll an insight check for me as the voice the breaks through and goes, turn right, go right. 16. All right, it's Mac. Mac. Guys, it's Mac, it's Mac, turn right. Tannis, driving check to do a sharp turn right. You're on your own, buddy, good luck. All right, here I go. Nine. Nine, as you scrape around the weight of the chimera causing you to spin out, you manage to just put your foot on the pedal but you are dragging slowly. You're going pretty slow and you damage the car even further. But you are set on the right path. And it is your turn, Tannis. You have your action. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna see this chimera trying to paw its way in through through the side of the seat. I'm going to take a jab at it with uh with the hilt of my sword. This is gonna be an unarmed strike. Okay. I'm just gonna shove the the hilt in there. Natural 20. Nice. Go ahead and roll damage. 12 bludgeoning damage. Stunning strike. Okay. Needs to make a constitution saving throw. One second. I take a grab. Where's my spell save? Easy. Okay. I'd like to point out that was max damage. That was. Was it? Oh, uh, one of them was max damage. Uh, that is going to be a, I rolled a natural 19. It's going to be a 23. I'm sorry. That, that probably succeeds. Yeah. Yeah. But you managed to shatter the, like the claw and the paw that was in your chest. You shattered the stone and it crumbles down below into your feet as the creature reaches out and it's just remaining as just a stone stump. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to reach back in, grab the hilt of the sword, and I'm going to take a long sword swing at him. Okay. Not a natural 20, but it's a 26. That hits. Pretty fucking good. You uh, should be doing this one-handed because you are driving with your other hand. Okay, I'll roll for... Yeah, just re-roll re the damage die. D8. 11. 11 nice. slashes. You slash again in its claws in front of you, cracking down the stone as it snarls and roars. Stunning strike. Stunning strike again? Okay. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, this thing is pretty chunky. That's gonna be a 21. I'm sorry. Yeah. Nope, it's worth a try. All it's right, made a rock. Turn. I'm so sorry. Nope, it's, it was worth a try. That's my turn. All right. That brings us around now to Brian. It is now your turn. For context, for everybody in the car right now, the Chimera is within five feet, so it's within melee range right now for everybody. Uh, Brian, it is now your turn. Kelly, are you in rough shape? <coughs> no, I'm back to full now. Okay, got it. Well, it's been working, so I'm going to keep full defensing because it hasn't failed me yet. Okay. That brings us around to the enemy's turn. When does he repeat the saving throw in the whole person? Uh, let me check. If he failed it at on Connor's turn, it'd be at the end of his turn, I think. All right. So he's losing a turn regardless. I need you, Kel, for me. 
to roll mm -hmm. 5d10 points of bludgeoning damage as he is crashing oh. the car straight into the side of a building because he cannot oh. turn. Oh! That's a miserable roll. That's 18. 18. You guys watch as you guys turn and swerve. You hear a massive crunch of metal and steel as the drow car, half of it goes into a building and the rest of the drow kind of all stop in place. The two remaining are going to take two pot shots at you, specifically towards you, Kel, and you, Brian. So one for each. Uh, pathetic. That is going to be a 10 on you, Kel. Misses and completely. On you, Brian, is a soft 20 but you're full defensive. 19. My ties, you hit. <laughs> All right, that hits. You drill a constitution saving throw for me. All right. Uh, oh, this that's a control. seven. Seven. You take three points of damage. Got it. And you are unconscious. Bless. Thank you. You are poisoned and unconscious. All right. Now, for the sake of argument, the drow are out of the combat, leaving just the chimera. The goblins. Actually, let's see if the goblins can salvage themselves. Uh, roll a D D100. If it's above 20, they can't, and they crash. Who wants it? I'll do it. 48. 48. The goblins, they don't crash gracefully, but they, they crash through a convenient fruit stall that just happens to be on the street oh, and no. collide with a street light and they are oh, out of the fight. Uh, that doesn't seem very compete. It could, doesn't seem very convenient at all. All right. Let's see, 15 foot cone. Oh no. She can easily angle at the front of the vehicle. It will catch three. Hmm. I'm gonna flip a coin. Actually, I have no coins. I'm gonna roll a D, uh, D4. If it's even, Gibby, you're gonna get aimed at. If it's odd, then Tannis, you're gonna get aimed at. And it is a one. So it's gonna be Tannis, Kel, and Bryant, and Bryant's unconscious. So you automatically fail. I need Kel and Bryant, uh, I need Kel and Tannis to make dexterity saving throws for me. Okay, dexterity. That's a 10. That is a failure. 22. That is, that is a success. I'm just gonna grab the stats for unconscious. Uh, okay. Let me roll some dice here. I need more D8s. I need more diehard dice. Tannis sees it coming. He's like, get roll, down! And he, roll and the gay it. dice, you coward. No, I, I actually put them away. I You're a I coward. I had to dig through and get them! He hits the button that makes his chair recline, and he just leans back as fast as he can. You sure do. One sec, come in. I need one more. You know what? I'll grab the gay D D D eight for you. How's that? I appreciate you, Monty. A gay date? <laughs> A gay date. That's what Taryn and Kostmeyer do every now and again. All right. I rolled a lot of things. Me too. Kel and Bryant, you immediately take 38 points of fire damage. Oh, what the fuck? Nice. It hurts. It's a dragon's head. I mean, I'm, I'm down, so... Tannis, you take half of that. Half of 38 is... Uh, 19, I believe. I'm down. All right. You are down as well. You've lost control of the car. Kel, are you down or are you up? I'm up, but just barely. <gasps> and Bryant is down. You would have come back to, you would have come out of consciousness, but you are now actually unconscious. And Tannis, so are you. 
That ends the enemy's turn, which is just the Chimera. Gibby, it is now your turn. The car is now careening off course. I better take control of that, then. Action, you take control of the vehicle. You just grab the steering wheel and just manage to stop yourself from careening off course into a driver on the opposite side. As you do so, you're kind of recontrolling. You just see the stone lion face just snarling at you. Oh, goody god, perhaps. Um, all right. Um, what do I got left? What do I got left? Okay, I got some left. Um, quick spell. So I can do something. And uh, quick, with quick spells, I can only do cantrip, right? No, you can do a normal spell, because you use your action to take control. You just can't, like, you can't, say, cast um, Scorching cast Ray but, and then um, Quicken Spell and use an actual thing that has but a slot. Any, yeah. any spell that's ranged is going to be with this advantage, right? If you're aiming for the Chimera, yes, because it's within melee range of you. What about Shocking Grasp level two? Shocking Grasp is a cantrip, so it, it would it's automatically... It's melee, though. It is. You absolutely can do that. If you want to quick and spell that, I'll allow that. Can I cast yeah. that at level two? No, it's a cantrip. It'll yeah. automatically cast it at the higher level. Yeah. You're level five, so it automatically casts it at the higher level. So it's it's automatically casting a really good level. Is that smart? Yeah. Well, it doesn't give me disadvantage. Here it goes! Eh, ten. Ten, you try and reach out and grasp it and like the sparks emit from your hand, but it doesn't do anything, unfortunately, as you kind of wrench the vehicle. Um, can I, am I allowed to do a quick spell twice? If I spend another two sorcery points? No, because it uses up your, your bonus action slot to do it. So you've uh, used the bonus action now. That's me then, I'm trying to drive. All right, Kel, I need a death saving throw. No, you don't, oh, I'm up. Oh, right, you're up. Sorry. I'm thinking about our other martial person who's unconscious. Yeah, no, you don't need it from them either. 12 points of healing to Bryant and Tannis and one to me as I cast Preserve Life. Nice. Fuck this Chimera. Oh. All right, they're both up. I'm back, baby. I like to imagine that Gibby's like leaning over, like driving, like piloting. So how much health do they get back? They both get 12 hit points back. Okay. Both of you guys get 12 hit points back, and you're uh, <gasps> scorched a bit. Your car, by the way, is fucked. All right, that ends your turn, Kel. Uh, no, it doesn't. Because uh, that was an action, and it was not a spell. So, bonus action, healing word. Let's do it on Tannis, because he's in the driver position. I appreciate it. That is four plus... You gain an additional seven hit points back. Hey, I'm back up to where I was. Appreciate and now that's it, my Joel. turn. All right. That brings us top of the turn order, which is the driving turn order. Tannis, you want to take over the car? Sure. <laughs> All right. As you take over the car from Gibby, well, go ahead... Hmm. Should I try to get this Chimera off of us first? Since Gibby's holding the car. Roll okay. a perception mm. check for me. I will roll a perception check for you. Because Mac is helping you out, and there's a reason for it. Natural 20. There is an overpass up ahead. Like an underpass, like a tunnel. Uh-huh. And looking with your elf eyes, that is not enough clearance for a chimera on the back of your vehicle. And its head is currently looking inside of the front of the car. It does not notice it. Uh, all right, then. I will... I will maintain control of the vehicle. Uh, and I will take two swings at it with my longsword. Okay. Just to try and get its attention back on me. Awful. Nine. Nine. You swing and you just hit stone. One more. Natural one. The roll severity. Oh, 18 severity. As you go to swing, 
the chimera bites down with the lion head on your sword and manages to snatch it out from your hand and you just hear it collide with the asphalt behind you. You are disarmed. Damn it. Well, I guess I'll make a driving check now. Okay. Pretty easy. It's just a straight, straight, straightforward. 16. Yeah, you're fine. You even like, you see the underpass and you just start revving up speed. Yeah, I hit the fucking gas. That brings us now to Bryant. You uh, come back into consciousness. Do we know there's an overpass or no? I'd say roll a perception check. Oh no, it's fine. I was just curious if we knew default. I don't want to waste the turn to, to look. Uh, okay. Kel, whatever it would take you to be fully healed, tell me the number and you're fully healed. Uh, that's a lot. That's fine. Is it more than 25? Much more. Then you're healed 25. All right. Alrighty. Kel, you're healed for 25. That is your action. Any bonus action for you, Brian? Uh, no. Okay. This brings us to the enemy's turn. Let's see if the Chimera gets its fire breath back. It does not, which is really lucky. Um. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna roll another d4. Odd, it's Tannis. Even, it's Gibby. That is a two. Gibby! That's me! I need either an athletics or acrobatics check of your choice. Um, acrobatics. Four. Nope. This thing bursts in through the front of the windshield again and grabs its claws into you, Gibby, and you are considered grappled as the Chimera has pulled you out of the vehicle and you are now near the roof as well. Uh, am I, am I at his level? Yep. Oh, fuck. He's like clenching you in his, in his claws like a cat would hold a mouse right now. And the goat head is like bleeding at you, and the lion head is rearing up to bite you. And you see behind it the overpass coming. Monty, why? Because I, it's fun. All right. It's that not ends, fun. That ends it's the Chimera's cool. turn. Gibby, it is now your turn as you are currently grappled by this Chimera. Uh, I mean, um, what do I roll to try and get ungrappled? Uh, be an athletics check to get ungrappled. Oh, great. My worst one. I can't roll acrobatics like before. Uh, that was for the initial grapple. Uh, to compete to escape would be would be another athletics check. I'll try. Non natural one. That is a soft one. I don't even have to roll a second time unless you roll. Yeah, I didn't roll a natural one. All right. Yeah, you you try and like you try and push away, but it's stone. Like, how are you gonna move stone? Can I can I try one more quick spell for shocking grasp? Absolutely. All right. I'm just gonna lose my fucking head. It is literally gonna be that scene from Hereditary. Oh, wait a minute. Actually, vicious mockery. Vicious mockery. Okay. Oh, terrible wisdom, though. Nine, it fails. That's four points of psychic damage to it. I yell out, get off me! You see the face, like, almost like a scolded cat. The goat head, like, and the lion head kind of, <clears throat> kind of tucks itself in. The dragon head snaps its maw shut, but it's still holding on to you, unfortunately. I mean, I got nothing left. I'm about to die. All right. Cal, it is now your turn. Is there any part of Gibby that's still in the vehicle with us? Uh, you could probably reach out and grab her legs if you, if you want to. Would that be an action or a bonus action? That would be an action. You're competing in a grapple check there. <sighs> would it be a bonus action to try to catch her if I do something stupid? Depends on what it is. I was thinking command drop. I will allow it, yes. Then command drop in Draconic. That is a 12. It fails. 
Gibby as you're like, get off of me, and you yell at him. You watch as the claws let go of you, and you just suddenly are let loose. Kel, go for go ahead for me and just for flavor roll an athletics check. This is just for flavor. That's okay. Seven. You, Gibby, you drop on the asphalt and like your pants get shredded up, but Kel holds on to you and uh, brings you and throws you into Bryant's lap, like on your back, and you uh, be fair, I was turn. in the back seat, kind of an awkward position. Yeah. Tannis, as you make your final driving check, go ahead and roll a driving check for me. Yay! Eleven. Eleven. Go ahead for me and roll 10d10 points of bludgeoning damage for me. Oh, 48. Holy shit. <laughs> the chimera, as it lets go of Gibby and shakes its head, turns around, seeing now the underpass as you guys drive underneath it. And as you look out, you ever see when, like, this is so Canadian, but like when a car, like a truck that has snow on it, like drives under and all the snow just blasts off. It's kind of mm -hmm. specific. I'm sorry. The chimera hits the like the overpass and it's just turned to dust and just like debris. It just shatters instantly. And you hear a scraping noise as the remaining claws like drift off the back. And as you guys continue driving, giving yourself space in your rickety, broken ass car, that is where we're going to take a break. <laughs> oh my God. We lived. How the fuck? You know, it's a good thing we're in a car because there were some pretty clutch moments there. It's a good thing we oh. have a life cleric with us. Oh, thank God I still had that poison potion. Yeah, how nice is it to have a dedicated healer in the party, Connor? <laughs> it's good. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but I just lost my USB port. So if I'm talking over you, I'm very sorry. But um, fortunately, my USB port's acting up. I should get audio back here in a second. No, we hear you. Oh, she can't hear us. Never mind. And I'm so glad I made her to catch you. Uh, well, she said for flavor, so I think she was going to let you do that regardless. Unless she'd roll like an act one, so... It's Prince Division, so it could have happened. Well, I probably would have been unconscious, but, you know, I might have survived. I would have been away from the Chimera. Very true. Uh, I'm gonna go bathroom. My hands are still shaking. <laughs> well, yeah, I could go bathroom. <laughs> Can you guys hear me okay? Sorry, I just lost my USB yeah, briefly there. Yeah, I'm back. All right, sweet. Yeah, let's take a break, everybody. Zero just uh, got up. What is this? Hmm? Oh. I think this is appropriate. Let's do this. How's, how's everybody in chat doing? <laughs> I wonder if Jack yeah. has to flash him all that. Also, Bosco is it had to do a lot of voice acting, so his voice is pretty thrashed. So he's here. He's with us. He's just kind of, you know, resting, which is probably a bit more important at the moment. That was... Wow, that was really Arkova, great. Arkova, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed that a combat meant for four people you basically did with three. You guys are really good. Again, to be fair, not really a melee friendly situation. Oh, I, I'm still impressive, man. Like that was really the three of you like fucking killed it. I still say you healing me was a good thing. Oh, I could have full I, I, I could have full defense well. again, but I probably would have gotten yelled at by everybody in chat, so I just did that because I didn't want to hear it. I, that was the end of the combat. Well, if the if the Chimera got its flame weapon back, that would have been really bad. Well, it would have knocked us out, but it was about to get its head decapitated. So, like, we were safe pretty much at that point. Not if Kel went down. You need to start making death saving throws. 
Well, but if the overpass killed the Chimera, then we're out of combat, and then we're, we can easily stabilize. If it had gotten another fling breath off and knocked me out before I could heal you, all but Gibby would have been unconscious, there's a good chance we would have crashed. That's true. Earlier in the fight, yes. And as established, we didn't have our seatbelts on, so that would have been really bad for us. Make sure to put your seatbelts on, everybody. Be sure to click it or you'll get a ticket. That is correct. I have some... I have some Cinnamon Toast Crunch here with me. Delicious. Oh. I got another okay. gluten-free chocolate chip cookie because I needed it. <laughs> How many of those did you make? Mm, um, took an amount. Why? Do you want more, a few more? No. I will make that recipe again. It was awesome. I liked I it a lot. More. Oh, you didn't like them? I like them a lot. That's the problem. I don't want any more. Oh. You sound really so good. thrilled. What really did you think good. of the oh. soup? Well, actually, I, yeah, don't talk. Never mind. I, you, don't, you don't want to be talking right now. I haven't had the soup. I'm, I'm, it's a precautionary. Look, I can, if I need to, I can do it. It's fine. I'm just, I'm being safe more than anything. My voice is fine. This is you a precautionary you be, thing. You realize you can be safe without sounding like you want to die? That's true. I could. This is more fun. <laughs> also, somebody at the beginning of the session was like, dude, you sound excited. I'm like, don't worry. I'll fix it. Yeah, but you scare me when you talk like that. Don't worry. I scare you when I talk. No. I mean, seriously, as a friend, it makes me worry something's wrong. No, nothing's wrong. Okay. If it was, I wouldn't tell you. Well, so you didn't safe. clarify, and you weren't going to clarify because you were doing a troll. So there, I was worried. Aw, sure, you poor shit, huh? What? I think of you as a friend. That's a mistake. Poison your next meal. <laughs> you can't kill me. Damn. I'm gonna make calzones next. I'm definitely not eating that. I'm gonna try some. Jeff suggested like breasting the. If dough the paladin for, like, used days. divine smite, it would have been over even faster. Maybe. The world will never know. Mm -hmm. We should get a paladin in the party. That'd be cool. That'd be really something. Yeah. One day I'll play something that's not a fighter. But how's forever it tank. You know, you know, forever for DM. I'm all. I'm forever tank. Hot damn. Welcome everybody to the uh, Bosco halftime show. Thank you. Um, you get a chance to play another character. You should do a full caster. No, I'm probably not. I'm not going to be able to play a full caster. Most I people want to play the caster, so I end up doing the tank thing because they're like, "Well, I'll be the caster, well, then I'll do the DPS." I'm like, "I'll draw the fire. It's fine." Just be a war mage wizard. No, they suck in 5e. Mm -hmm. Like a spell sword from 3-5 would be fun, but fuck fighting casters in 5e. You could always be a hexblade warlock. Yeah, or but they bard. can't tank as well as a paladin or a fighter. Oh, shit. Sorry, Austin, for all the crunching. Suppose... Uh... I'll read off some bits and subs, then. Do it. You got this, man. Hell yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Um, Ed, congratulations on, the, on that one thing. Type it to me? I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I assume you can talk about it, but I'm not going to be that person's that's like, that's I'm going to shill for you. But I yeah, saw it. I was like, oh, my God, that's so cool. Yeah, type it. I don't know what you're I legit don't know what you're talking about. Here, I'll, um, I'll put it in the... Because it's on Twitter, so it's it's oh it's it is it is readily publicly available that I saw. I was like, that's cool. You see? No. It's in general. Oh. Con oh congrats. I, I have no idea. I watched football today, so I didn't even see it. <laughs> well, now you know. Um, damn. Yeah. You know what? I'm just going to retweet it. That's fine. <laughs> hey, we got it, Connor. You do. Colin Litzinger, thank you for the 
1,000 bits. You got it right, Colin Litzinger. Hey! Soy Canada Dienz. Thank you for the two months. Hells yeah. This is some sick music. Keep up the work, gamers. Uh, handsome Robot. Thank you for the sub. TZA9000. Thank you for the 17 months. Yes. Burnout Vaughn. Thank you for getting a uh, tier one stub to Zyma style or Zyma site. Hemihead NHRA. Thank you for the 17 months. Over a year. God, I feel aged. Sean Chai, 2025, thank you for the 17 months. Love the show. Keep it going. Dragon Karask, thank you for the two months. Can't stick around since I'm not quite caught up yet. Just wanted to make sure I remembered to resub and to tell you all that I love the shows. Benny Boy, thank you for the, giving a sub to Monkey Got No Morals. That's you. Yeah, it's me. Monkey. Nom nom goblin, thank you for the 100 bits. Be gay, do crap. No, Costumire. Not literally. Stop doing crimes. Dice ruler, thank you for the five months. <laughs> yep. Flustered bun, thank you for the four bits. You lived. Burnout Vaughn, thank you for the 100 bits. Did our hey Arkolf, did Bob and Grizz show you that thing I made by chance? Yeah, you did. Yeah. Oh, you're still here. I'm always here. I don't leave. That's unfortunate. Woo. Yep. But if I have to live with me, so does everyone else. God has, decided, God has decided to let me live another day, and I'm about to make it everyone's problem. That's accurate. <laughs> are you, you going to go get the rest of your gay dice? I have them. I could. Good. Do it. I'm going to break them out for boss fights, I think. Luke the Lucas, thank you for the 100 bits. Boss fights, whenever you roll against me, I demand it. That's my one wish. <laughs> uh, hope you're okay, Bosco. And if not, I hope you get better. I'm always okay. I'm just talking softly, which I'm never allowed to do. There we go. Fantastic Callum, thank you for the 50 bits. You guys just fucking Looney Tunes that Chimera. Sure did. Jesus True. Christ. We gave him the wily coyote treatment. <laughs> GeForce 39, thank you for the 16 months. Nice driving. Thanks. Flustered Bun, thank you for the three bits. Monty, my anxiety is through the roof and I was cooking. That was amazing. Holy shit. Also, I'm sorry I said it wasn't fun, Monty. I didn't mean it. I mean, I did no. mean it. I just get it was very, stressful. very stressed it was, out. It was, it was a stressful fun. It was keep, like, keep you know... Mind. Keep in mind also for me, as I am a bit of a newbie to all D&D and tabletop, I've played two, three, this is the third campaign of any kind of tabletop I've ever played. I have never re-rolled a character. I have not had the experience of a, of my character dying on me. So when I that did. happens, it's going to be, I'm probably going to cry. I will probably legit cry. So. I, I think my favorite thing is my 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 rune my rune uh, rune knight fighter Goliath got turned into stone, and then I rolled up a new character, and like we were talking, like the the rest of the party was talking about how he died, and my new character's kind of an asshole. I was just like, well, if he was a better fighter, he wouldn't have died, would he? And then the, the inside, it was oh. like, <laughs> like inside, I'm crying, but I'm like, but my character would say that because he's kind of a dick, but it's okay. Damn, Balasar, what the fuck? Yeah, Balasar's an asshole, dude. Uh, Leah, Leah loved it. They were like, they were like, yeah. they're like, Moni, fuck, but also I love you. <laughs> All right, you guys, good to keep going. Thank you yeah. for the, just got a few more bits to read. Okay. Stellar Coyote, thank you for the 100 bits. Gibby, did you just kill four people? I now have a taste for blood. I, think I like it was I like how Gibby, Gibby Gibby kills people and everybody says she's amazing. Brian kills people and he's a horrible human being. Y'all are fucking hypocrites. I think it was actually five. Yeah, was, I would like to point out she's also bloodthirsty. I really I was gonna do non lethal, but it's like and their head exploded. I was what, like, oh in okay, what never fucking mind. Universe is lightning damage not lethal. What do you? That's also high? that's also not controllable either because that's random. That's wild magic effect. I guess that's so. good to know. Yike. Mm-hmm. 
It's like, yeah, if that goes off, everybody's gonna die, so sorry. I'm just <laughs> Ooh, glad you yeah. remembered what that one was, because if it was lightning damage on us three. <laughs> That's the thing, is you have to pick creatures and then it goes off, so you Well, know. recall again, the first time I rolled Tides of Chaos Magic Surge, it was that fucking fireball. Yes, and only awesome. by the grace of Monty did I not just be like, and well, that that was the first that one's, division. Um, I'm glad that you guys was a, all That done one's this. a reroll. That's the only one where I'm like, why is this here? Like, the rest of them are all really fun or random. That one is the most, like, f like big middle finger, and it's just like, I don't... I removed that one. All right, we good to keep going, Connor? You still have some bits I mean, to read I off. Keep, I keep getting interrupted, but yeah. Sorry. Oathbreaker, John, think of the 100 bits. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm fucking pump. Whoa, thanks with spirals in my eye. Spepa can, thank you for the 1,000 bits. Welcome back, Prince Division. Travis, a carry, thank you for the 100 bits. Chimera, you just got blown to bits. On an overpass bridge, roll them death saving throws with disadvantage. Damn. Imagine having disadvantage on death saving throws. Magic Ninja Go, thank you for the 100 bits. Sorry I'm late. I was at Legoland today for a special 10th anniversary event. I got two streams to catch up on this one and then Connor's. Sadly, I was logged out of my Twitch account on mobile and I didn't have time to try and remember my past. Zen Lita, thank you for the 200 bits. That fight was intense. If you guys had the Paladin with you, the fight would have been much shorter. Damn. Uh, we need to get a Paladin with us. Too many fandoms. Thank you for the 15 months. Magic Ninja Go, thank you for the 100 bits. Also, that gold amulet I got is actually metal. Ooh. Luke the Lucas, thank you for the 100 bits. In a less important news, when I get home from work i can finally finish my guild quest to unlock paladin in final fantasy 14. yeah let me let me know what it's like to play paladin yeah that's class it's pretty fun so it's a little Tucker. boring if you're not into it thank you for the 100 bits you guys know that one drow lived and is now out to skin kel and wear his hide right mm. bring I mean, it on bitch kel would probably invite vitamin for tea first Gauze 21, thank you for the 100 bits. Connor pulls out a gun, combat stops. By the way, dragon breath weapons should be stronger, in my opinion. No! Shut your dirty mouth. I think Dragonborn should, uh, you know, have dark vision, but you know. Constable Mutton, thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, Ultimate Road Rage would have been a perfect music for this chase. And finally. I really like the music I picked. I, I really enjoyed yeah, this song. It was cool. It was kind of like, uh... oh god, I, I forget, I forget the, I forget what it reminded me of. But uh... fun fact, that's the song I listened to to write the bones of the Prince Division, actually. And I looked at the user agreement license on it by the artist, and we can use it. So that's why I figured I'd bring it in and use it. Yeah. But you know, it's okay. It's fine. Magic Ninja Go, thank you for the 100 bits. By the way, the 10th anniversary event is actually for the thing that is in my name. Oh, that's Magic Ninjago. Okay. Ah. I see. Uh, Lego is going to be turning 90 soon. Holy shit. That's pretty old. Bricks All have right. been around for a long time. We good to keep going? Let's do it. All right. That's not what I want. All right, so as the combat subsides and you are still driving, Tannis. You guys are covered in broken windshield glass. The entire top of the car has been like just like punched inwards. There are arrows pocketing various different parts of the car. But it's still it's still going. Just for the sake of it. Gil is going to reach over and cast Cure Wounds on Bryant. For seven. I'm rolling terribly today. Bryant, you heal for seven hit points? 
Um, Mati, do I still have an arrow in my shoulder? How did that work again? Yep, you still do. Just very weakly. Could someone please? Would that be a medicine check? Yeah, that'd be a medicine check. Soft 20. Yeah, you easily you just gently remove it. You take no additional damage and you kind of like gently sort of... You guys have a first aid kit in the car. You manage to kind of patch people up who have, you know, what cannot be healed by healing magics themselves. Thank you. You get the Quite sense listening. that... You get the sense that Gibby is not okay and it has less, it has less to do with the arrow in her shoulder than anything else. It's almost like she killed some people and she'd never done that before. Oh yeah, Gibby's in the back seat with Gail and Brian now. Yeah. You sprawled out on my lap. Sorry. <laughs> Which is dumb. You should get up, Sarah. <laughs> uh, she very gingerly kind of gets into the front seat. She's shaking the entire time. It's a little tough yeah. play for her. The upholstery of the seats are just like scorched over. Like you can actually like when you touch it, it's like like the plastic nature of the upholstery is kind of wrinkled inwards, and there's just like the foam on the outside that you're kind of touching as you make your way to the front seat. <clears throat> oh, what do we do now? We got everything we needed from that house, right? I was well. The arm is still with me. She sort of gestures with it. Hope so. Yeah, you still have it. Oh, you actually found something, then. <laughs> yeah. It was in her closet. Was it the skeleton? What? No. Your mom. <laughs> no, it was just this and I wonder if we should take this to our vampire contact what is it she shows it's like that stone yeah. arm but it's, it's a stone like... arm the like the end of which like the, the finger part's normal but the end of which has like a interesting intricate sort of like um uh unique protrusion coming out of it Looks like it would oh. slot into something very specific. <laughs> that is very kind of her to give us a hand with our investigation. Gibby looks at him yeah. like she wants to laugh, but she can't. Okay, the radio kind of crackles. Uh, I'll I'll just try to fiddle with it to see if if we can get a better signal. All right, go ahead and roll an Arcana Not. check. Natural one. <laughs> like, how do I, you turn it off by accident? Oh shit! You turn it back on. <laughs> can other people try that? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I'll give it a go. With dads and dads and technology. I mean, it's just bound to happen. Right? I mean, thank you, Never but. Mind. Fuck you, roll 20. <laughs> Welcome to the Lauren Gibby show. Does your back hurt, Sarah, from carrying us all the time? <laughs> Please don't put that on me. <laughs> it's, it's just asking for karma. I don't want it. Knock on wood. All right, you fiddle with the dials, and you hear a voice kind of chime and go, Oh my god, that guy exploded! That was crazy! Are you guys okay? Hello? Hello? I'll grab, the I'll grab the receiver. It's okay. It's a couple of people that have been set on fire can be. Whoa, that's crazy. So uh, we're watching the city right now. Uh, currently, Imp is hacked into the uh, the surveillance system. So we're kind of like your reconnaissance unit. I see. We told you we'd help you out. Thanks. Yes. Can Matt key to me right now, Dennis? I just I just have the, my thumb down on the receiver. Speed Demon. She's not a real artist. She just petrifies things. 
and sells them as statues. She's a phony. I knew she was a fraud. Oh, uh, over. Ha. You hear the, the thing click. Oh, shit. Uh, it just told me that they're actually setting up garrisons around the Demon Devil Ward. You might need to take a specific path to get out. Are you going to try and lay low inside of the ward? Or are you going to try and get out? Uh, over. I think we need to get out. Over. Okay, we will provide you explicit. No, no, listen. Oh, no, wait, what? You hear like a. Oh, okay. Hit a. Uh, go right. Okay, I'll I'll go right. No, my right. Fuck. I mean left. Shit. Sorry. Oh no. Okay, go left first. And you, with very shitty instructions. And a very rickety car. You guys managed to make it out of the Demon Devil Ward. What ward are you guys aiming for? What are we closest to right now? I believe you have your closest to the central ward, I would say. It's the middle ward. Central happens to be where our vampire contact is. If we want to drop by his place. Alternatively, you could ditch the car, get in the Sky Train, and try and get somewhere else. It might be best to come back for the car later, honestly, since they know what they're looking for. Does, uh... I can't remember if we if we did a check on this before, but does the arm seem like it would fit in any statues that we've seen just in our time as patrolmen? All of you roll, I would say, intelligence checks. Intelligence. I'm gonna say... I'm gonna say uh, Kel and Bryant with advantage because you guys were you were there. You were looking at a lot of the statues while you were there. It's guidance on help. Bryant. It's not gonna help. Doing it anyway. Do it anyway. Twelve. Okay. It's a fourteen. Intelligence check, right? Yeah, with advantage because you were you were 14. there most of the time. <laughs> Come on, roll twenty. Please be nice. Those aren't bad rolls. This is oh, sorry. Oh. Eight. Kel, you were keeping pretty vigilant on the people who were looking at you. Gibby, you were a little too busy with breaking and entering. Tannis, you're pretty you're pretty good at observing things. You didn't see any statue missing an arm wherever you were. So like the one in the closet that you you found and the other ones upstairs didn't have anything missing. Bryant, same with you. Nothing on the ground floor that was being sold was missing an arm. There clearly is a statue somewhere missing an arm, and you did not see where it was. Which tells you something. There are other rooms in that building you never found. Uh, so guidance would not have helped Bosco's roll at all? Uh, no, actually, you, got, you roll guidance, because that actually could. If you get over a 16, it would help. Roll guidance. 16. As you think about it, your mind wanders to that one side door in the main foyer. Not the one that led to the kitchen, but the opposite end before the stairs. There was a guard in front of that door. You never saw what was in that room. And it was being heavily guarded for a reason, probably, you assume. Just based off of your own knowledge. Frickin' really? <sighs> Lovely. The one door. Because I thought Tannis looked into that window when there was nothing in that room. That room didn't room. have a window. That must have been a different room. Yeah. You guys had explored thoroughly the uh, western side of the building, and there was a her studio was on the eastern side, and you guys never saw inside of it or what was going on in there. It was guarded by a security guard, and it was in the main foyer where there were a lot of prying eyes. Hmm. At least we know where to go when we get back. The simple solution. Oh, the, God, the, we have to go the, back? Take the curse off the hand and then do a DNA swab of whatever it is. There you go. Boom. Got him. And we couldn't use it as a key. Oh, he doesn't need the arm. He's probably dead. <clears throat> or she. Or it. I don't know. They. I don't know. Whatever it is. If this was, in fact, a living being at some point. Yeah, it could have just been a statue. But that's Probably. why you would take the spell off, because if it doesn't work, then you know it's a statue. Well, here's a question. Do we want to keep working, or do we want to go somewhere where we can regroup for a while? 
I think we need to set the car somewhere for now and get somewhere safe. I do not know about you, but I am tapped. I'm pretty exhausted myself. What do you think is safe? The precinct. We can take the sky train. Get everything important we need out of the vehicle and ditch it. We can come back for it later. Just let's place it somewhere in the center of the world. Okay, you guys okay with that plan? Yep. Okay. Sure. You guys park the car, you take out the radio and you know the computer and whatnot. Everything else is just you leave the flashlights, you take out the night goggles and a few of the other identifying things in there that would be pretty bad to leave behind. You and guys the arm. just leave it. And the arm. Yeah, of course. I, no, you leave the arm behind. <laughs> you guys. I would like everyone to make perception checks as you're making your way, you know, trying to kind of hide your being from the general 17. populace. Can I roll athletics instead? Eight. No, sure, you don't have guidance. Sweet. Roll athletics. Cool. It's 11. You do that, like, jump that they do, you know, like, when they jump over fences, you're like, huh, you do a really sick jump. Nice. I press X to jump. Hmm. Okay. Cal, as you kind of scan, um, you don't see anyone following you who seems to be of ill intent, but you do notice standing few buildings over, just kind of giving you like a little bit of a look, keeping an eye on you, is Ginye, the artist. It would appear we have eyes in the sky. Nice. ones. As you make your way down kind of into the underground uh, station, you just see him kind of give you like a little, little casual thumbs up. Just kind of like, hey, you made it. I will return the thumbs up. All right, you guys get on the sky train. You're heading back to the precinct. Yeah. Okay. Need to get another sword. You also, gotta report the damages to our vehicle. <laughs> you just got it too. You guys make your way back to the precinct. It is very, very, very early in the morning at this point. By the time you guys get back, it's like three or four a.m. Like the sun is starting to rise, and you guys are exhausted. We're getting here at this time of the night. We should check in at the front desk. Yeah. Uh, you see at the front desk, the dwarf, actually. Hogarth was his name. It was Hogarth Whitbraid, Whitebraid, wasn't Hogarth. it? Hogarth. Mm -hmm. As you guys walk in, he kind of looks at you. You guys are, like, you guys are burnt God. and, like, have arrow sharks, and he just kind of, like, looks and goes... Rough night, I take it, eh? Little bit of one, yes. Yeah. Superman. I get the right. reference. Because that makes sense. His name is Hogarth. Hogarth. <laughs> Iron oh, Man. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck off. Yeah, 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 there we go. Got it. No, Thank no, you. no. That, I'll, take, I'll, take that one. I'll take that one on mm -hmm. the chin, Ed. All right, well, I don't think anyone's in your office right now in the forensics, and uh, I think there might be someone in the um, computers and whatnot, the little kobold fella, but, um, you know, have a good morning. He goes back to work awkwardly. Thank you. Hope you have a good morning, too. Just slowly slide over to the Prince Division offices. All right, you guys make your way. Open. It is open, quote unquote. They're not serving food, but they have vending machines and there's like, you know, there's like free crappy coffee there that you can get. We want to make a bit stop for snacks. Mm, I had some finger food at the event. Maybe. Gibby shakes her head. She actually looks like she's on the verge of being sick. Then let's go sit down. 
Okay. You guys head back into the office. There is a couch in there. Um, you guys kind of just take turns sleeping. So you sleep at your desks. Do you guys try and get a long rest in, or are you guys just resting, like just short resting it? Well, they have to report to who's ever in the office. I mean, if we can get a long rest in before someone comes in. You could, yeah. Uh, that, that's as you guys, what we're doing, uh, right? We're waiting yeah, for someone. I'll... I'll take my, I'll trance, and then uh, I'll let the rest of them get their, get their long rests, and uh, then I'll, I'll handle things from okay. there. There is no one in the office, obviously, because of the timing. Um, after about two hours into your guys' rest, Lucy does show up, and she, like, opens her, she's like, <laughs> and almost drops her coffee the shock of all of you guys like sleeping around the place but you guys are asleep and she doesn't want to disturb you um she takes your place and after a while you guys do wake up um and lucy brings a first aid kit and she orders food for you and goes pick goes and picks it up and you guys you guys kind of grumble awake you have a pizza waiting for you on the on the floor of the office i'll have been up for a while uh, at this point, I pretty much would have would have gotten right back to work as soon as my four hours of my trance were up. Yeah, you probably uh, transcribe what happened, and I assume for Lucy, like the events of what happened and and the events of the party and the people potentially who were there. That's a presumptuous, but yeah. I just for levity, you know. Yeah, I'll so. I'll tell her everything. Okay, she she takes it all down for the record, says you kind of relay everything and. As you give her the assessment of the car, you see she visibly gets quite sad because it was a pretty nice car. Well, that's yeah. a real shame. Uh, Acid back was so kind with his donations to get us that car, but oh. you know. That was Ivan. Above oh. game. Oh, it was Ivan. You are correct. Well, mm -hmm. Acid back also funded a little bit, and the Fay Lady as well. Mm. Right. Okay. Well, um, vehicle. I'm sure they had to have known what could have happened to it. Yeah, of course. And honestly, I've seen worse. Uh, don't even get me started on the gelatinous cube incident. That was something. <laughs> have to inquire about that a different time. Sounds like oh, an exciting. It's a moment. Pretty quick story. I mean, we have access to the sewers and the parking space, and a gelatinous cube came up and ate one of the cars. Just mm -hmm. ate it. I've learned one thing in this job. It's never go into the sewers. Yeah. Yeah. She nods. Mm -hmm. Lucy. Does the precinct happen to have a counselor or anything like that? We do. We do offer some services. Kel will look over to Gibby. She's not even listening. She's tuned out. Brian is going to grab Gibby and take her out of the office. She flinches when you touch her, but she sort of looks up, sees you, and is like, yeah, okay. Finish talking. Right. And I'm going to escort her out and let them finish their debrief. She kind of looks towards, Lucy kind of looks towards the rest of you guys, Tannis and Cal, and she kind of goes, this line of work is not easy. I do not think she has killed before. I remember... Lucy kind of sighs and looks down. I remember the first time I had to kill something. It never gets easier. No. But the first time is always the worst. It's a shock, that's for sure. I didn't talk for a few days. Barely ate. Makes everything taste like ash. But it sounds so messed up, but it was either me or them. And... Yeah, I can empathize, but those people made their choices and she made hers. They were really intent on killing you guys. Yeah, it's okay. just the reality of it. But we did learn quite a bit. It's just... Lucy kind of rubs her face. 
The thought I always come back to is why? What is happening? It was Kel and Bryant that saw the bodyguard of the tower, right? Yeah, you guys saw him. Well, if I had to wager a guess, with the tower's bodyguard there and the concoctions that she is brewing, perhaps the tower is seeking an immortal source of sustenance. The they do not seem to be in a good mood, though. That's that does. She watches. She begins to like flip through the papers and thinks about it. I'll have to talk to Roche about this. Mm. But why? Why? Because it seems like they're trying to turn princes, but they but haven't why? figured it out just yet. But 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 why? I I'm sorry, Cal. I it doesn't make any sense. Why now? Why this? Yeah, have something changed. Gibby and Bryant. I'm going to sit Gibby in a chair. And then I'm going to grab the chair next to her and I'm going to pull it around so I can face her. I'm going to very casually sit down, put one leg over the other. And I'm just going to stare at her and see if she says anything for about 30 seconds. She sort of looks you in the eye and she sort of opens her mouth a little, but all you're getting is just a sort of not quite panic attack sort of breathing, but she's visibly like exhaling rather out of her mouth in an unnatural way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The words you're looking for are, I've never killed anyone, Brian. What do I do? <laughs> I'd do it again. Good. You're gonna have to do it a lot. I didn't even... I didn't feel anything. I watched that guy's head explode, and I was just focused on getting the next guy. Good, then you're better than I thought. And what? Killing people. You're naturally desensitized to it. Normally people have to go through the whole process of how could I ever do that? I thought you were going to go maybe cry to Kel, and then when you wanted to talk about your feelings, you'd go to Tannis then maybe retire when you realize that this wasn't your line of work, but the hard part's over. It's messed up, Brian. Yeah, it is, but it's the same way I think, so I get it. It actually makes it a lot easier. <laughs> it's not easy. In a way, it's worse. Yeah, normal society will look at it and go, you're heartless and you're awful, and how could you do that? But it makes the job really easy. When your life is constantly threatened, you learn that it's either kill or be killed. And you can't save everybody. You can't talk everybody off the ledge. Some people just want to kill you. My life. She looks at him very closely. Fuck does my life matter? That was the one I was trying to protect in that car. It's like she's just realizing it, too. Like I said, Gibby, this is the easier talk to have, because this one I can actually relate to. I figured I'd have to send you to Kel and Tannis. I don't... I mean, maybe you'll have to. I mean... I don't know what I even feel right now. Which I guess is normal. Do you feel anything? Not... I don't know. I think what you want is to feel something, but you can't, and that scares you. At least that's what it sounds like. 
Because a normal yeah. person should kill somebody and feel remorse and you just feel nothing. Correct she me if I'm wrong. She nods. That's most of it, I think. Spoiler. Again, not the politically correct answer, but some people are just built differently. Brain chemistry and all that shit. I don't understand the science <laughs> of it, but... She you guys are finally, having this. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 you go ahead. You go ahead. She finally manages a weak laugh and she's sort of like, to be fair, maybe it's not such a shock to me myself. I mean, I've already been doing some questionable things. Maybe I'm just slow in catching up with my own self, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Wouldn't hurt to talk to Durzab either. He probably knows what you're going through. <sighs> Guy basically kills for a living. I don't want to think about that right now. Fair Sorry. enough. I don't have an in me right now. I, I know I have to, but I can't right now. Brant's just going to put a hand on her shoulder. You're going to be okay. There's nothing wrong with you. Well, there's something wrong with all of us, but you're going to be fine. Do me a favor real quick. Okay. Take me to the bathroom. I just need to... I need to puke. I think I'll feel a lot better when I do. Yeah, probably. And he'll escort her to the bathroom. Okay. After a while, you guys take some time, come to your senses. Roche arrives, Captain Roche. And you all reconvene with the war table, essentially. A giant bulletin board now tacked to the wall as you've detailed all the information provided, and Roche has seemed to be restoked with a sense of purpose now. As you detail the inside of the building, what you saw inside, the people there, Roche really, really digs for names to which you guys can't really provide too many, unfortunately. A lot of the names given were code names or monikers or nicknames. Probably um, would he intentionally. Be, so would he be interested in that business card I got from that really skeezy, what was he, devil, demon? I have him in my notes. Oh, yes, him. Because he gave me his business card. He sure he, did. I don't know if the name he gave was a, a R Arne Ar Rune. Spine Devil. Yeah, he's a spine devil. Yeah, Arnarun. That was his name. Yeah, you can give that to. Um, well, I'll show him the card, but I'm going to hold on to it. Yeah, Captain Roche, kind of, as he provides the information, he just kind of goes, I've heard rumors. A lot of the Central Ward Police Divisions have been talking about it. We haven't heard much of it here in the Heavens Ward Police Division. A lot of the criminal circles have been spiraling into a center point. I'll give you two guesses as to what that center point is. Tower. Precisely. Your associate, he kind of gives you a side glance, Gibby, for lack of a better term, has been very generous with providing us information in relation to these things. That being said, this woman, this what did you say she was? Medusa. If she's a big player in this scheme, we need to shut her down and find out precisely what she's doing and why she's doing it. The last thing we need is this woman succeeding at whatever this is. But more importantly, if they're going to keep running these experiments on random civilians, we need it to stop. Stop. 
So we're going back. Not right away. You, and he looks towards all of you, you all need to rest. I need you at your peak physical form and mental form for this. We have kicked the hornet's nest. We must be prepared to face them. I'm gonna need another sword. We can get you one of those. We're gonna need another car. That might be a bit more difficult. He's talking to your dragon buddies. They got lots of cash. Joke, but that might be an option. I wasn't joking. You know how to pander. I compliment you. He kind of gives you a little bit of a half smile, like, I hate that you're right. Like, he's like, I hate that it's a compliment, but also an insult at the same time, you fucker. But, backhanded um, compliment. Yeah, really backhanded. He kind of stops for a moment. He goes, you're going to need more men on this mission. Lucy? And Lucy goes, yeah, yes, sir. Absolutely. It's been a while since I've broken into the place again. And Roach kind of turns. You don't mind this old man slowing you down, do you? You're, you're coming with us. Both of you. They, Lucy and him exchange a look. What? You think we're just desk jockeys? No, I guess I've seen this movie and you don't make it back. So you might want to make sure you're okay with that. Gibby doesn't want to say anything, but she's definitely got this look of like, Oh, uh, is this safe? Hell no, it's not. It's not safe at all. It wasn't safe for us. Hey, Chief, how many days away from retirement are you? Just out of curiosity. Well, probably about 10 more. But if we're unlucky, probably a couple weeks. Okay, just checking. Yeah, that's all the boxes. Hmm. I want to get blueprints of this house. I want to see if I can catch any rumors from any of the other divisions. See who built it. But that's all logistics work. In the meantime, rest. Hey, Chief. Hmm? If she is the Medusa, what do we do about her gaze? You said she was wearing glasses, right? Yes. Those sorts of glasses are near impossible to replicate. They're extremely important and very powerful arcane relics. You can't just go to your local optometrist and pick those puppies up. If I had to guess any better, I'd say that the tower gave those to her as a sort of well, business arrangement. You said there was a magic item. Would you have any guesses as to whether you would need to align yourself with it? Sort of attune to it? It beats me. Uh, Captain Roach. Mm -hmm. If our gaze is that powerful to require such an artifact, would it also work on her? Well, that's why she's wearing it. Oh, that simple. We bring mirrors. Oh, can we have mirrored sunglasses? <sighs> he watches Roach kind of just sighs, just like, ah, there's the bullshit I remember. How would you see through those? Oh, they make two way, they make one way mirrors. We use it in the interrogation room. We could look into getting something like that to assist us, but. That being said, those glasses, I have no doubts, are to a street. If her gaze yeah, coming out of it... Them off her face. If it's that easy. The other thing we're not thinking about is what else is in there. She certainly had guests over, but we don't know what else could be there on the regular, and that's what we need to figure out as well. Also not to mention the various statues, which are clearly minions that can come to life at any moment. Additional security systems that were probably not activated when you were there, given the amount of guests you told me about. I mean, they were, I don't think they were just security systems. Those were, those were pretty much people, certain animals and creatures she turned. I guess she'll well, control them now. If we shut this bitch down, there are people we can save. One of the statues was a dragon. If that comes out, yeah. <laughs> Lucy, your first priority be? Your first priority is to rest. You get a new sword. You take a couple days and just 
get back on your feet. That's an order, all of you. Lucy, uh, yes. Go down and find a piece of this stone. I want to analyze it and see what exactly it is. It's going to take some time anyway. In the meantime, <clears throat> he kind of stands up and you watch as he kind of puts on his jacket. I'm going to go talk to some architectural friends of mine. See what they can help me with. Oh, and we do have a resource in the form of the Cursed Artist Collective, if you wish to have them run reconnaissance. Is that who was on the radio last night? Slow turn to Cal. Yes, that was Speed Demon. Right. We'll consult Speed Demon. If the... <laughs> Investigation requires us. Captain? Yes? I know what you may think, but we wouldn't have gotten out alive without them. Roll a persuasion check. Do I get any advantage on that? No, just general. Okay. 22. Soft. <laughs> he kind of stops for a second and goes, fine, but don't let other people on our radio waves. And he <laughs> Exits the room and leaves. Okay, well, off to the demon devil word with me. I'll fit right in. <laughs> because I'm a tiefling. I'm gonna go. <laughs> she gathers her things and she sits out. Be careful, Lucy. Gibby. I mean, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, Gibby! <laughs> Be careful, me. <laughs> oh my god, she's gone insane. <laughs> Sometimes I leave little post-it notes to myself just saying, like, you did a good job, Gibby. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, rest up to uh, finish the pizza, okay? Someone take it home. Okay, bye-bye. She closes the door. Now I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, Cal, that was really dumb to tell them about the artists. And I will counter with, they offered to help. If we can get them to cooperate, better for everyone. Well, seeing as how the department has a uh, less hostile outlook on organized crime families than I would have originally thought, I doubt a group of graffiti artists would pop up on their radar as something they would need to take care of. I mean, as long as we don't tell the central. Apparently, Roche already knows about Gibby and work. Dursa is like currently like extorted like in the back alleyway beating someone up. He starts sneezing. Cut back. <laughs> At you. <laughs> I wonder if he's gotten over the needle thing yet. I will have to poke him and find out. I don't think you're gonna get that much mileage on that joke much farther, Kel, but. <laughs> I suppose you could try. All right. So, you guys head home? Yep. When you get home, Tannis, obviously, Nefene is at school. Uh, there's actually a present waiting for you on the countertop, Tannis. Ooh. For me. They're, 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 uh, like, the marshmallow squares, the non-copyright infringement marshmallow squares that you can easily make. Wow. <laughs> they fit right in a s'more. Mm -hmm. I eat one. Yeah. Pretty chewy. Probably more marshmallow than than substance, but that's you know your daughter. So mm. she used a lot more butter in this than she should have. Pretty good, though. Yeah. You kind of sit down. As you check your phone, no messages from Jericho. I'll just, I'll just set my phone on a counter somewhere, and once I'm finished with my, uh, once I'm finished with my marshmallow squares, however many I'm satisfied with, I'll just 
in the living room, I'll clear some space and I'll just begin to do uh, repetitions of martial arts stances that I've studied for a while. Sort of like guys, and stuff. Can you guys hear the cat? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. But we were ignoring it. <laughs> we're trying to be polite. <laughs> One second. It's not Give a lady of healing scene, so we can't comment. Uh... Every time he does a kata. Why do your joints make that noise? Listen. You've lived as long as I have. You will start making meow your noises. Body, <laughs> your body starts making all kinds of crazy noises. Uh, whenever I sit down, I go, and whenever I uh, do some exercises, I go, meow. Tannis' key eyes a meow. Austin, Austin just, just heard the most ungodly noise <laughs> come out of my mouth. I had to mute there on Discord, but I was like, oh! <laughs> 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 All right, sorry. Back to what you were doing, Tannis. I apologize. Yeah, I'm. I'm just focusing and centering myself, sort of like a almost meditative martial arts process that he picked up on after he left the bodyguarding business. Okay, you do that, and at about four o'clock, Amelia. Uh, oh my God, wrong child. Oh my God, <laughs> Amelia, what are you doing here? <laughs> Hello, I'm your child now. Nefane <laughs> comes back home from soccer practice and runs in. She goes, Dad, you smell like a campfire. Yeah, I'll just sort of, I'll, I'll like quickly throw a shirt on to cover up some burns that I have. That's probably because of your marshmallows that you gave me. She looks over. You ate half the tray? I was very hungry, and they were very delicious. Roll, roll just a general charisma check with advantage. Oh boy, here we go. Okay. You're in, I was gonna say you're in trouble. Your daughter gets one. your daughter gets a little sheepish, kind of like you know my dad's loser, but he complimented me, made me feel good. And she goes, <laughs> "I'm gonna go feed Mr. Bubbles," and she runs off into her bedroom. Okay, Kato. And I'll just, I'll just towel off any sweat I've accumulated after doing repeated exercises over and over. Brian, as you make your way home, you open up the door and you see Kobe currently like on the edge, just kind of face peering up and looking at you. Um, I'm going to sit on the couch and I'm going to let him get on the couch. Okay. He like scrambles onto the couch and just kind of sits in your lap. And I'm just going to put the TV on. I'm going to pet him. And that's probably where Brian's going to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Cal, you make your way home. Mm -hmm. No sound of breeze rod across the, uh, across the hallway. You make your way inside of your apartment. Nice and warm. Do you do anything? Kel would like to call Bryant, actually, on the phone. Fuck, you're calling and not texting, you heathen. That's right. I'm dominating your time and demanding it. Oh, Jesus. Normally I have to pay nine ninety five for that, but okay. Okay. Meow, 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 meow. That is not my ringer. Meow, meow, meow. That is not my ringer. <laughs> Kel is calling his own phone somehow, or he's calling Lucy. I, I'm trying to think of like a different ringtone. They're all worse in my head. It's fine. Well, it, it's on vibrate. Thing, but a cat. <laughs> meow, 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 meow. No, it's it's more like it's more like I am a tough guy. I'm so cool. Answer my phone, and I'll take you to school. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's, that's I, I don't. We don't need to do this scene anymore. I can't believe I just witnessed that. Bryant, do you want that ringtone, or would you rather just take? The I don't cat? want any part of what that. That was the most Canadian, awful white person rap I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all night. That's what all I'm right. afraid of. <laughs> oh, all right. 
right, you call Brian. Brian, do you pick up the phone? I. It's on vibrate, you fools. Yeah, I'll pick it up. <laughs> With the giant lizard dog in my lap. Hello? Michael. I can't I... cast any more spells, so I can't be in your head right now. I. You realize I can hang the phone up. Don't do that. I don't know how you did it before. Listen, I just want you to know that it's going to eat at you for all time. It will. It's okay. One day I'll teach you, Bubby. What do you want? <clears throat> I want to know how you're doing, Michael. Awful. Next question. This is your second of three. Lest you feel my rat. I don't know. I was, I, I was in a game. You are not quite yourself today. You held your tongue twice. Once with Miss Costemeyer, then again with Lady Odelia. So I'm going to have to ask you a favor, Rex. Could you stop taking mental notes like you're some kind of fucking robot? Because it's creepy. Doctor. I don't give a shit what you are. It's terrifying. I'm also your friend and I care. Don't use the F word with me. I told you not to have a potty mouth. What? What? You're trying to distract me. I would never do such a thing. How you doing, buddy? Answer the question. What was the question again? How are you? I said I was awful. I said you had two more and that was your second one. You have one more. Then what has you holding your tongue? Damn it, I should have only given you two. I don't... Have you noticed a pattern when I talk, Kel? Several. You will have to be more specific. Oh, Jesus. Have you noticed that nothing ever good comes from it? No, because that is not true. No, it's very true. I'm trying to let you guys be more effective. So rather than spouting off at the mouth all the time, I'm trying to shut the fuck up. There was, yeah, there was something I wanted to say to both of those people, and I just bit my tongue because it wasn't the time or the place, and it would have distracted from the task at hand. <clears throat> so I'm just not going to say shit. Michael, do not be afraid to speak your mind. No, you don't get to say that. Because every time I speak my mind, I get yelled at for speaking my mind. And people don't get to have it fucking both ways. I'm sorry. Don't. No, I know what you're doing. Don't do it. No, really, I am. Why? What are you sorry about? You didn't do anything. If anything, you're the only person who gives a shit. I'm sorry for not speaking up for you more. You don't... You kept my secret as long as you could, and I appreciate that. I can't really ask you to lie for me. I mean, you could, and I would. Yeah, I know. That's why I can't do it. I'm a very bad influence on you, and I get it. When you get attached to somebody, you will do really stupid stuff for them. But you can't lie for people. I don't care how important or how special they are. You, you need to call people on their bullshit. Because you I see through it, Kel. You, you do. Which is good. Don't start defending it. It is complicated. I will call you on your bullshit, but I do not want to let your bullshit bog you down. I'm just like trying it is right to... right now. 
what I'm trying to do is not make my bullshit other people's problem because right now we have a job to do and the stakes keep getting higher and higher and higher and it's time for the baby games and the bullshit and the witty one-liners to stop. I'm just going to shut the fuck up and do my job. I do not agree with that. Luckily, it's not your choice. And while I appreciate the concern, I'm not going to change my mind. <clears throat> Besides, you should be more worried about Gibby than me. I know what Gibby is going through. No, you don't. Perhaps not the exact same thing, but... Taking a life is never a simple thing. Uh-huh. And how do you feel about taking a life, Kel? It is my solemn duty to preserve life. Uh-huh. Sometimes, you... for that to happen, uh -huh. other lives must be taken. I feel nothing. Oh, really? You don't feel anything when you kill somebody. You, you, you're for real right now. <sighs> Again, it is complicated. Uh huh. The situation we were in earlier. That would be a situation in which no, it is as you said, not the time or the place. Oh, so you compartmentalize your feelings. You feel it. You just don't think about it. Let me ask you something, Kel. When you close your eyes at night, do you ever see the people you've killed? I'm talking metaphorically. Yes. Yeah, that means you feel it. I don't metaphorically feel shit. I don't think Gibby does either. Problem is, they can come fucking talk to me or show up at my doorstep. That's my fucking burden. But in terms of seeing the flashes in my fucking eyelids, no. I don't get a good night's rest for a lot of reasons. That's not one of them. Gibby. Yo. You guys good if we continue from there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get home. And you walk inside, and the parrot is currently on your couch with the with the channel changer, and is like watching the TV, and like, "Hey, buddy, how you doing?" It's like this really weird voice, probably from a movie. Come on, I'll get you some food. As you gently toss your keys, the keys hit that book that you got from the Golden Dragon. Um. Well, first she's gonna feed the bird. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you feed him and he happily eats it. Um, as he eats, she'll sit and survey the silence of her apartment and for lack of better things to do, she will go ahead and try to read that book. Okay, roll an intelligence check with advantage for me. No, wait, that's a saving throw. Not a saving throw. I know the difference now. I mean, Ooh. finally, on this book, oh. I've gotten a decent roll. That gives you something very good, actually. Really? A natural, Do tell. That's a natural 20 for you podcast listeners. Yeah, that's... I've been waiting for this, actually, for a while. Okay, hold on. I need some appropriate music here. And yeah, while you're looking for it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Something exploded. I just threw yeah, away. A I just threw away a can. <laughs> yeah, I figured, but it did sound a little bit like a minor glass explosion. So, okay, hold on. I gotta edit this. I haven't touched this. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna make it just available. Oh, the writing's so rough, though. Okay. I'm going to make it available for all players, but I think, Gibby, you should read through... I'm, I'm really sorry in advance, by the way, Sarah. The writing of this book is awful. Okay. But... It's really dry, but... 
here you go. Or should I read this out loud or? Yeah, oh. read it out loud. It might be God, really difficult to read out loud, it's but it's- really long too, okay. I don't know if you can afford her. All right. Listen, okay, come on. <laughs> Just a cold read. In certain congealed two... sectors of a major arcana study, the anchor points more dictated presumed, th oh God. More dictated presumes the immaculate formula that the basis of all arcana stem not from the tradition of main arcana, but from the mechanization, machinis, machinations, machinations of major arcana devoted by historical tomes in literature. In, <laughs> in Igalor Ibis's tome, Convergence of Greater Powers, Volume 2, a theorem arrives on the prospect that functions of arcana can be sourced not from the practitioner or nor hereditary dictation, but instead conduits that line the very fabrics of reality. Those sources are implied to be the 21 majors of arcanist theory. Though such theorems give, oh God. Though such give, theorems give chide remarks of archaic presumptions, one must not stray from the sources rendered through eons of study. Of the 21 major arcana anchors only of the 21 major okay wait anchors oh i think there's i don't know if this is grammatically correct of the 21 major arcana anchors only had presumed physical man manifestations reincarnation theorized to be means of maintainment for channels of arcana to breach through the walls of very reality and permeate the very essence of being in soul of the theorized 21 ipsis claims Ipsis's claims to have discovered nine such iterations in their moderate existence. Of the 21 existent in mortal permanence resides the fool, magician, hierophant, lovers, hermit, death, devil, tower, and the moon. Okay. Of these nine machinations of, of these, my, of these nine, the machinations of love, sorry. Of these, of, these, of these nine, the machinations of magician and lovers were presumed theorized to be measured in existence of groups of mortal individuals granted with ex ex expedient life. One such theorem suggests that dragons are the manifestation of the magician made carnate, while the lovers are elves theorized made longevity vested. Such theorems provide no such arcane proof of this theory and thus have ma remained gleeful speculation said to, be fuel said to be fuels for the grandeur of both species. Reincarnation, uh, sorry. If I could interrupt real quick, uh, could you scroll along with this, Monty, on Wallfine? Sure, absolutely. Um, reincarnation as, shut up. Reincarnation as means of permeance in reality is the hypothesis for the form of the fool, hermit, and the moon. Mortal entities are presumed to act as shells for these unaware bastions of magical tethering, and when removed from life, simply retract and return anew. Inuus made claims to have met the reincarnation of the moon several times in their archiving, but so solidify such claims as true arcana is presumed the believing of the rambling of the everyday mortal. If claims of the major arcana as physical is to be believed, the most contrived theorem relies on the existence of death and the tower. Similar to the fool, hermit, and moon, these entities are presented to <sighs> are presented as claimed to be physical, tangible entities within reach of mortal hands and eyes. The tower is claimed the source of a great ab abjuration magics and conjurations of stone, but by simple name association, does one wonder the same hyperbolic? I'm sorry, I'm just pronouncing this. Of the same hyperbolic presumption plaguing the existence of other arcanas, it presumed correct. Death is said in its history to carve between the immaterial and the tangible as a result of tampering by necromantic practitioners. In a recount of bone sacrifice by <laughs> Arrhenius Peach. Peach claims to have met the embodiment of death as arcana, said to be presented as a mass of singular swirling specters that spoke in all mortal tongues. Such poetic recounts, such poetic recounts beguile wonder to this one's mind, as one could argue that the manifestation met, the manifestation met simply a physical presentation misconstrued as entity. I'm sorry. Um, and what can be said of the other remaining subjects of the major arcanum theory? Their nature is too immense to be measured by modern magical practitioners and archive, cap archive capabilities. Some speculation leads to understand that some pieces of major arcana are so massive in their existence that they will remain for all eternity impossible to comprehend by even the will of ancient gods. By then, no cognitive understanding can even such a thing exist if not by the understanding of its beings. One would be enraptured by the wonder of it all, but it simply belines a disconnect from the true traditional arcana of wizards. But does, 
but does allure of the strange natures of sorcerers, dragons, and warlocks. Such theorems are simply too unconventional unconventional for proper hypothesis of proper iconic study and the very source that channels through any influence and the theories of master practitioner of magical this is whatever trails off in more barn jargon jesus okay that definitely is weird but seems to have some very interesting important information It just makes me think Lady Odelia is the Arcana of Death. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, go bulls. <laughs> uh, Gibby is going to bookmark that page. Okay. You put a receipt in that page. And is that it for now with that? The rest of it is all just like the contrived similarities between conjuration and abjuration and the very finite code similarities etc 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 and it's so just, just like, for that chapter you mean that's all i get for that chapter that one chapter stands out to you just because of the language being used and the mentioning of sorcerers obviously relating to your own existence as well as some of the names in there the tower in particular for obvious reasons as well as the mentioning of dragons and other things Monty, Monty, will you make that blurb available reg in the regular so it can look be looked at again anytime? Yeah, it is free access. Uh, everyone can access awesome. it now. It's under documents, so you can read it whenever you want. Uh, Gibby still doesn't understand a lot of that, and frankly, she's not in the mindset to do so, so she's kind of like, well, yeah. that's really fucking weird you ever, that I cannot deal right now. You ever try to read a textbook when you're dehydrated? That's the same feeling you're getting after reading that section. So yeah, she closes the book, and she sort of looks towards her bedroom and then her hands start to shake again and she pulls out her phone while it's shaking and she texts stirs up and asks are you busy right now uh you get a text back washing my hands with something right now you okay she's gonna call okay uh, uh, uh hi give hey how's it going um hi um, all right. You, you okay? No, actually, no. Um, did, could you come over or could I come over? I don't, I don't know which one is better. You hear him kind of go, give me a sec. And you just hear it like the, he covers over the speaker goes, you to take it, you know. No, 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 you don't have to take it. You don't need help. Just, just. Okay? Okay. No, it's really important. No, it's not okay. the It's okay. 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 Good. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm on my way, okay? Do you want anything to drink or eat anything like that? Gabby thinks back to that pizza and how she just sort of nursed gingerly half a slice and then couldn't because it was just like not. She's like, um, yeah, that might be good. Some food. All right. I'll, I'll be right over, okay? Okay. He hangs up. And after about, probably about 40 minutes, he arrives and kind of concernedly, like, he's not like his, like, <gasps> like, golden retriever, like, I'm here, it's me! Like, he actually opens the door and seems very concerned, just based off of the, the nature of your voice and whatnot. He rolled an insight check and rolled pretty high, so... I will close the door behind him and gesture to the couch. Hey, you, you okay? You look more pale than usual. Uh, go, go ahead and have a seat. Very nervously, he sits down on the seat. D did I did I do something wrong? She shakes her head. She sort of she sort of does the um uh, the side thing where you sit in someone's lap. She like crawls up into his lap and gives him a hug. Okay, okay. He kind of gives, he kind of pats the back of your head and goes, Hey, 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 Bert, you, you okay? Kind of making me nervous right now. You're not dying, are you? No. Almost did. And you feel his, kind of his posture kind of stiffen a bit. Almost. We went, we went to a party to get information. They caught us. He had to run. I think I killed about five people getting away. Okay. 
And you're all... You're sad about it? Killing people? Not... in the way I think I should be. And what's the way you should be? Should be sad, I suppose. It's not a small thing. But I'm... I'm more relieved that what I did saved every- helped save everyone. You know, this might surprise you, but I've killed a lot of people, too. She sort of curls into him a little harder, but it's also sort of this thing of, like, it's a pained emotion. And she just asks, what was the worst? Please. I need to know what I'm making my peace with. Yeah, but you're not like me. You did these things to save yourself. And one might argue, I do the same thing. Your elf friend probably wouldn't agree. And you know what? It's probably right in ways. I know. But, Ken, I... I need to know what the worst is if we're gonna... I have to see what I'm okay with. I guess. When I was still a copper ring, before I became a red ring, I was about 19. And we had this one guy who owed us money and took out a big debt from the Baron and didn't pay it back. Most of the time, we figure they're gambling debts or loaner debts from loan sharks. Sometimes the Baron, sometimes somebody else's. Turns out, he needed the money to pay to keep his kids. We didn't know that until after we killed him. What happened to the kids? He runs a hand down his back of his head. Well... Last I heard, their aunt took him in. We don't know what happened after that. She's very silently got, like, tears running down her face, but that's the extent of it. She's not, like, sobbing or breathing differently. It's just those tears. Durzip looks very stern. Like, you get the sense that he's pained by the experience, but he's very much keeping it down. <sighs> okay. And the sad thing is, is I'm probably going to kill better men for less. Will it ever change? I don't know. She um, reaches over and grabs the remote for the TV and turns it on. Do you mind? Do you mind staying the night? I don't think I can sleep if I'm by myself. Gibby, Gibby, look at me. She will after a minute. Survival has a cost. Okay. No. I think I understood that from the beginning. Otherwise, this wouldn't have happened at all. I think some part of me got that. Don't feel ashamed for surviving. Okay. Well, you need to come to terms with the fact that you made a choice. And what separates weaker men from stronger men or women in this instance, is accepting that choice. It doesn't mean it's the right choice. In hell, you'll regret it. But that's something you're going to have to struggle and deal with, okay? And you know what? 
I'm going to struggle and deal with it with you, all right? Yeah, I I get that. And honestly, Gibby. I... Gibby? Yeah. And he kind of gently brings up his hand, he just kind of strokes with his thumb, just strokes one of the tears off your face. If you didn't kill him, and you died, they're going to... They would have wished that you had killed them if I had found out about it. She smiles weakly. I blew one of their heads off. Hey, good job. Instant. Very effective. And he, he pats you twice on the head and leans back. I mean, he's not wrong. Like, if you dragged it out, I'd be a little bit more concerned. And for what it's worth, yeah, I know I'm trying to be okay with the choices I've made. I've sort of come to terms with coming to terms with that but I definitely think I would have regretted doing it differently when it came to you I've done enough Believe. of that I've done enough of that in my life making my choices so other people would be okay with me I don't I don't want to do that anymore You gotta focus on the ones you can save. <sighs> Even if that includes you. And what if we have to come up against each other in that? Well, I'd say if you're gonna electrocute me, Avoid the center space, especially between the legs. Aim for the neck or the head, but don't do fire to the face. I want a pretty corpse when I'm dead, all right? When my girlfriend's <laughs> murdered me. <laughs> he just hugs you really firmly and just like... Just... She's kind of laugh crying, but she's just sort of like... It's more yeah. laugh than it, but it's just... Yeah. Yeah, Gibby just... She just wants to watch TV to fall asleep because she, she can't fall asleep in the silence. Yeah, you guys fall asleep, and he just lets you sleep on his chest, and you just have a blanket over you, and you just eventually pass out. Uh -huh. And as time passes, is there any preparations anybody would like to make? Oh god, are we going straight back in? Monty, I need a break. We're doing a time jump, so... Well, Kel has I'm... no gold, so he can't make any preparations. Tannis, you want a new sword? Yeah, I want a new sword. And I want okay. more bullets. All right. You got sword, and you have 20 more bullets. 20? Hot damn. Yeah, they get you a lot for this mission. No, I'm sitting at 22. Um, can I have, like, I would, how much will it run me to get, like, three more poison potions and, like, oh, three more healing potions? Roll a persuasion check for me. Ooh, against the DM. Uh, 18, soft. Okay. You guys each get a singular healing potion as provided by, uh, by the police division. And two poison cure potions as well. Each or total? Total. Two total. Ooh, Monty. Oh, I thought of a so, preparation. Mm-hmm. Kill with like mirrors. H? It's H, isn't it? You what, want, oh, you want that's a... that's backstreet gaming though. I shouldn't say it. Mm -hmm. Backstreet. <laughs> back 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 sorry, sorry. Back I had a really back. All right. <laughs> I had a really fun idea. If Kill I mean, cannot get the mirror, yo, I see you playing five E. These are some three five streets, motherfucker. <laughs> Actually, if Kel can't get the mirrored shades. He would like mirror plating on his shield. That's what I was gonna say. I was like, get your shield mirrored, man. You want a you want a mirror shield? Mm -hmm. That is not standard issue. I will g let you get a big mirror if you wish. Big mirror. Eh, that'll work. All right, I'll say for I'll say for for five gold, you get a shitty, cheap, but very very nice mirror that you can like duct tape to your arm. Oh, look, it's a riot shield, but a mirror. 
Kel I'm will sure quietly, that won't shatter instantly. Kel will quietly text everyone else in the party asking if he can borrow five gold. <laughs> you can have five gold from me. I will pay you back. I'm so sorry. As you're texting, Durza leans over your shoulder. Gibby goes, is he out of money? <laughs> she looks at him and he's too generous. Yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> I'm going to shower. I want to smell like pomegranates again. <laughs> you can buy it yourself. I know you have. Actually, would our vampire contact be able to grab me one more of those anti-vampire things, or is that really hard to make? That's really hard to make. You only got the one, unfortunately. All right. Oh, wait, how did the, how much did the, so the department gave us the poison potions and the extra potion? Yes, you do not okay. have to pay for those. They were provided. Awesome sauce. Because of your persuasion check, Roche was able to sanction it out as a necessary resource for your guys' mission. Oh, dang it. There was one thing I wanted to also mention to Durza, but now I was in the shower. No, you can talk to him when he comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is this like days after that? How many days after this is that? You guys have probably been on standby for about a week. Durza's actually been staying at your house the entire time. I'm so sorry for the size of my apartment. He doesn't mind it. He does bonk his head on things on occasion, but it's an occupational hazard. The one he is a bit annoyed is the fact that people are trying to get him back to work and he doesn't want to go. <laughs> is, is he out of the shower? Yeah. yeah, he comes out. He's got a towel around his waist. He goes, listen, I can deal with the tiny doors. <clears throat> I can deal with the tiny bowls and spoons. Tiny towel. <laughs> I fear for your neighbors. I'll say that much. Maybe maybe I can buy something on Arcana that's a little bit wider. I'm sure there's sites for that. Ooh, a rope would be nice. He just kind of goes <laughs> over. Um, there's a, with everything that's happened, I, I forgot. I have something I wanted to ask you about. Sure. Um, she probably by now it's in that that bowl she has. Um, she goes and fishes out that business card from that fucking spine devil and hands it to Dorzov and asks, "Do you know who this guy is?" You see all the hairs on his neck stand up on end. He goes, "Did you meet with this guy?" He was at the party. He offered me a job. Yeah, you're not doing that, are you? <laughs> Good God, no. Good. He this guy's a real at... this guy's a real fucking piece. He ain't just go after princesses or nothing either. He goes after kids, a lot of really innocent people. He wanted me to work against the to, against the celestials. What do you mean? Uh, it's part of my condition. What do you mean? Um, I have one of my princess perks. She kind of does the uh, quotation mark symbol. He kind of gives you a little like eh, 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 perks with you. And he's like, all right. One of my perks is that apparently I'm not affected by celestial magic. Seems hmm. like that's why he was really interested in me. Okay, Gibby. Yeah. I love you. You're beautiful. You're very smart. You scare me a lot. Don't tell people about that. She nods and then she kind of cocks her head. You love me? No. <laughs> not at all. It's not like I spent a week here because, you know, I was bored. She sort of does her best to bump against his collarbone. He kind of he kind of leans back and goes, You say we had sex by accident? <laughs> just never heard you say it out loud. Gosh, I thought we had something. <laughs> she she does her best to get up on her tippy toes and give him a kiss, a proper kiss. Like, you know, and she's like, I love you too. Yeah, I love you too. Hmm. And listen, I know the killing's getting to you, but it actually makes me feel kind of relieved. Knowing yeah. that if you're in danger, you'll do what's right when it comes down to it. I guess it worries me too that 
It was more for Tannis and Bryant and Kel that I did it. I wasn't thinking about myself. It was pretty bad. Well, start! He kind of, like, gives you, like, a flick in the forehead. Ow! That's my fucking girlfriend you're talking about. <laughs> you're gonna give your girlfriend a concussion. I'll have to get needles. No, 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 I'm sorry. He, like, begins to, like, rub your forehead, like, shit, undo, undo, undo. <laughs> All right, well, good luck. I wish we could help you, but that's some territory that even the Baron doesn't want to trek over. You understand, right? Right. We've, hmm. um, got some backup coming with us this time. Good. <sighs> good luck. It gives you a nod. Yeah. Oh, I should put on pants before I leave. And he kind of walks oh, back to the bathroom. Oh, goodness, yes. <laughs> you hear the I just imagine the bird in the corner going, Ooh. No, the, the bird does that. <laughs> As he walks by, he goes, stuff it. And he kind of keeps walking. <laughs> and the bird kind of, stuff it, back in Durza's voice. You're just teaching him more. I know, and I hate it. And he kind of goes in and cleans himself off. Brian, anything you want to do to prepare? Um, how much do coffins cost in this universe? A lot, like real life. Cool. I need to get one. But I might <laughs> okay. have to put it on layaway. Okay. Okay. Dying is fucking expensive. Yeah. It, it is. I'd also like to put on my two weeks notice at the job. And then buy the coffin. <laughs> All right. Tannis, you got your weapon? Anything else you want to do? I'm just going to hang out with my daughter for a couple of weeks and continue doing my exercises. Okay. At around 8 p.m. one night, you all get a collective text message from Lucy. And it says, it's time, with a sunglasses emoji. <laughs> it could have been mirrored sunglasses. <laughs> you guys make your way to the precinct? Yep. Okay. Yep. As you guys make your way there, roll up in. First of all, you have a new car. <gasps> Hot damn. Nice. Monty. Mm-hmm. I want you to describe the car that we got, because I was very disappointed at the start. I want you to describe this car with the amount of detail and enthusiasm you would for a full buffet at the Romansion. Go. Oh, my God, Ed, you're evil. <laughs> all right, all right, all That's right. That's evil, right. man. Hold on, hold on. Give me a hot second here. You're looking up a description, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'm looking up a picture so I can have a. Reference. She doesn't know anything about cars, and I, know I just, enough. I, I just wanna, I wanna feel the love that she. I wanna find someone who can talk to me about cars the way Monty talks to me about food, and she's the only person doing it right now. So, <laughs> all right. Hang so, Thank the you. car itself is a beautiful silver and black vehicle. Mm. The rims are of immaculate silver. How many inches? From the ground. Okay, I'll take it. No, Just it's, say a number it's... between one and twenty-two. Okay, the the rims themselves are very like around the where the the around the, the wheels. wheels? <laughs> Okay, listen up, bitch. All right. So <laughs> this is what it's like from the outside. <laughs> okay. This car so. forcibly ejects Brian every time he tries to get in. Mm -hmm. It has an aerodynamic frame. <laughs> okay. Oh, the frame's okay. aerodynamic and not the body. What kind of engine does it have, Monty? Hybrid. A hybrid engine, okay. A hybrid engine. Okay. It has, unnecessarily so, it has, um... <laughs> unnecessarily so? 
<laughs> Undercarriage lady. <laughs> <laughs> um it is low to the ground like as the entire the entire frame is quite low to the ground mm -hmm. the wheels are well guarded people are messaging me on discord and i can't handle this <laughs> <laughs> oh we needed this the front grill uh -huh. has two very nice high LED headlights. Oh. The, the front... Um, oh my god, my brain's not working. The mm -hmm. windshield is very nice. It, the, it <laughs> exists. It's in, it's in the front of the, the car? The back seat and, and back, like, back windshield entirely has... Um, you can't look into them. It's got the... the, the non-transparent yeah tinted mm -hmm. windows mm. but they're tinted like a like a blue color nice. um percentage? probably about 70. oh really okay yeah um which is not really legal in the city but it's legal because you guys yeah. are cops uh the front dashboard where you would have like the you know brand new sort of technical like backup high advanced sort of system instead mm -hmm. has been refitted to be a computer so you have a a keyboard and then that screen acts as a All computer right. Uh, the radio is attached as well. Are you uh, good? What kind of torque does it get? Um. Uh. Uh, what's the zero to sixty? Three point five. Three point five out of a hybrid truck. It's not a truck. It's a car. And we're in That's Magic loaded. Land. Okay. So it's a hybrid car that goes three. <laughs> it's a fucking Tesla. <laughs> Yeah, it's sure. It's Tesla. The equivalent. fucking high-end Tesla is you what you're asked. trying to describe. I think, except that's all elect. I don't know what you continue, Monty. This is great. I'm done. That's your car. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't wait for you to be entertained by the fucking YouTube comments on that segment of the episode. <laughs> I hope it waters your crops. All right. Oh, it does. As you guys meet near the vehicle, you see walking around in actual, like, gear. Roche, who is currently wearing, similar to Avu Laga, a sort of combination armor, like, long jacket. Uh, and strapped to his back is a massive Claymore sword. Jesus. Standing next to him in a similar sort of covert attire. Because um, you guys have seen them in, like, you know... The suit and tie, sort of like, you know, the button-up shirt with the tie, sort of attire with those two. Uh, Lucy is currently wearing uh, a more sort of leather armor-looking sort of um, probably like riot gear attire, but less bulky. Um, notably, on either side, she has two daggers. Her she's hair. Rogue. Yep, she's a rogue. Her hair is tied back in a tight ponytail, and she's got like a, a kind of like... Uh, baseball cap with the with the PD logo on it. And they both stride up to you and they go and Roche kind of goes, alright, I'm driving. Finally. At this fair, you are in bed. Sure. Alright, let's load up. Get in. Above game, wow, he didn't even blink at that. There was a little bit of hesitation. He knows. About the Roll an insight check. I don't know if this ever came up. Roll an insight check, Kel. Oh, okie dokie. I am proficient with that. <laughs> but it don't fucking matter. <laughs> well, he rolled poorly. If it hasn't been it hasn't been brought up, you get the sense that Captain Roche is a dad. Oh, yeah, I knew he had oh. a son. Okay, yeah, you guys already it. knew that. But yeah. He didn't hesitate for a second, like yeah, I'm a dad. <laughs> like, that's why is that weird? And yeah, he loads up into the front seat, uh, the driver's seat, and adjusts the mirrors and turns on the computer. It's a fairly sizable car. Um, as you guys mm -hmm. get inside, you all fit inside. Mm -hmm. Your gear is put in the trunk, and you guys set off back. Good trunk space? Yeah, to fit all those, uh, all the, the weird duffel bag that uh, Roche brings with nice. him. More importantly, is there leg room in the back seat? Yeah, 
It's not crazy good, but it's, you know, for you, it's okay. Is there re real uh, rear seat climate control? Yes. Stop antagonizing the DM. Cup holders lacking, I will say that. Disappointing, <laughs> but acceptable. Yeah. Here's the real question. Can I adjust the audio from the back, the radio and such? Considering there's no music playing, you don't know. But there's no like dashboard in the back where I can change the music. Not that you can Which see. Curses. Okay. This car is acceptable. Continue. <laughs> I'm so glad for you. As Roche sets up driving. <laughs> he's actually not a great driver. Well, he driving wise, he's fine. But directions you know wise, what? he's. You're a great bad captain, Roche. God help him. <laughs> okay, that helps a little bit. Lucy and you give him directions, which does help him. And as you guys make your way inside of the Demon Devil Ward, you guys park a good, probably six or eight blocks away. Rose shoulders the buff, the duffel bag. And he looks towards all of you and goes, All right. Time for some proper breaking and entering. Prince Division, move out. Yes, sir. Let us go to war. And that is where we're going to end the session for tonight. Whew. I've already got my spells prepared for next Bye, time. Austin. Bye, Bye, Austin. Austin. Goodbye, Austin. Man. Fuck you, Austin. I can't believe I had to wait two weeks. For... Shit. I need some downtime. That got intense. This is number 36, right? Yep. I have no idea. It is episode 36. We're closing on episode 50. Hot damn. Oh, yeah. We're not going to make it. We're not going to make Is that what you said? We're not going to make it? We're not going to make it. You, you could the be right. Hell you know? up, Ed. They're all going to laugh at us. I mean, that Chimera's Dragon Breath hit like, uh, nearly took all of us out. That hurts. It's nothing to sneeze at. And it gets it back on a five or a six of a roll of a d6, and I rolled a three. So you guys That's looked out. Right it's eh. a big owie. I'm still impressed that we did a four-man encounter with three people like that. I'm very happy about that. Oh, you were extra bodies to be targeted. And if you weren't there, then a lot of people would have gone down a lot faster, I think. Perhaps. That would require you to roll better, though. It's possible. I rolled pretty all right, honestly, this session. I heard you hit us with the big giving. breath. That was the bad one. That one I, hurt, yeah. I like how hard karma hit me for bullying that drow. <clears throat> I have oh, all I these win. evil plans, and then I'm unconscious. To be fair, he did crash into a wall. He deserved it. I hope he we also... see him when we infiltrate this place, because I want to <laughs> wave to him again. Mm -hmm. Ugh, I have dread. Judge dread? No, bad dread. Uh, I, must have I am the law. I have to write. I have to draw the map because you, you guys will actually have access. We'll to We'll actually map. have a map. Uh, oh shit! We're you. gonna Metal Gear Solid this shit. By the way, uh, can I request a shotgun with breaching rounds just in case? Uh, I'd also, I'd also like my oh. after, after your world. your beautiful car. Absolutely not. But we're not ever gonna get to use the fucking car. You I just mean, did. To Sorry, get remind. there. What the fuck? Why did we waste our money on the thing we didn't even need? Uh, we could have Ubered there. Sorry, remind me. I can't change my spells out until I do another level, right? Yeah, not until you level up, unfortunately. Uh, Which hopefully Minute, we Medi soon. Minute Meteors has been the most useless thing. On the other hand, though, I have two... Like... But because there's no point in using it, I basically have two extra slots to cast, you know... Other things, Ray yeah. level, level three. You never know. Well. Either way, uh, we should go around the horn and do our outros. Hold on, I gotta jump this over to the... Ugh, I was not expecting to get that dark. <laughs> you made it that dark, Sarah! Made, what do you yeah, mean? You took Woo. it there. How did I do? I'm happens. sorry!
You made a character funny. choice that was dark, I, and you were surprised you, when it got dark. The worst part about that is you're like, I want to talk to Durza about my feelings. I'm like, oh, fuck, Durza's an idiot, though. And I have to, like, be him. And I'm then gonna, people might think like, I'm an asshole, but it's really just because Durza's a fucking moron. I know. People think I'm an asshole, and I'm like, that's because Brian. I don't know why you're so mean to me. I want to talk to a criminal about all the criminals I just killed. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, Kel that's tried you. to talk to Bryant about Literally, Bryant's feelings. Who else would I talk to? And Kel was like, I Brian, we need to, to talk. And Brian was I like, think, yeah, think, about that. How are you, Kel? If if Durza was not as sympathetic as he was, if you were like, I killed all these people who tried to kill me, he'd be like, fuck yeah, high score. <laughs> like, well, again, because you're misinterpreting because Gibby's not that upset about that. I think that upsets her in a weird way. Yeah. She's upset no, that I, she doesn't feel it's anything. Coming, I, it's coming to terms with things, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which That's is what I was rolling. I was rolling Durzib in the background where he was trying to pick up on what was going on for the most part, but you know. You had a good talk with Brian. People liked it. Mm. Brian's the perfect person to talk to about not feeling things. <laughs> Connor, Outros. do your job! Arkolf, where can they find you? Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Arkolf. When I'm active, <laughs> I am not. Maybe later. Woo! Bosco, where can they find you? You can find me at Ed Bosco via both Instagram and Twitter and right here on Twitter, twitch.tv slash Edward Bosco. Monty, where can they find you? You can find me at Monty. Oh, uh, 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 fuck, I can't do it. You can find me not describing cars on uh, my Twitter at Monty Glue. Why not? And you can find me at twitch.tv. Shut up. You can find me at twitch.tv forward slash Monty Glue. Uh, I'm playing Metopia tomorrow, so that'll be really, really fun. We're gonna, we're gonna save people's faces. So we're gonna you. Um, as there is uh, Twitter with Sarah and HM with an E, Willie, uh, my machines. Why are you all stealing my thing? Yeah, your thing this session has been talking quick and being animated. Yes, it has. that is a fucking thing you've I done. I have put so much energy into this session, and you have. Batted me away. Thanks for, okay. thanks though, legitimately though, Bosco. Thanks for being a trooper. I'm not a trooper. I'm just here. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and youtubecom slash Devil, where I stream Tuesdays, <laughs> Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, playing a tabletop simulator, Yakuza 4 Remastered, Back for Blood, Guilty Gears Drive, Among Us, Wilder Myth. Be sure to check out Dead House Sonata, where I uh, uh, helping promote the game. That should be uh, coming out sometime next year, maybe. Uh, be sure to purchase yourself a Founders Pack. Get a hold of that. Uh, and also check out my DMs Guild, where I'll be releasing the Accursed Fighter sometime soon. Connor, are you okay? Uh, What's are you okay, dude? Like, is everything all right? Connor, what's wrong with you? Are you okay, Connor? Connor, you is anything wrong? Is there anything you want to talk about live on stream? Are you all right, dude? Are you sick? Smooth criminal reference. All of those things. Ah. Uh, yeah, and also our sponsor, Die Hard Dice, is here as well. <laughs> the, the classic dice aren't as loud as the metal ones. Ah, uh, sure. sure. Thank you. They're also and scarier. For all your dice your sponsorship. And dice accessories, be sure to head on over to dieharddice.com to grab yourself some tabletop gaming peripherals, including but not limited to dice towers, dice trays, and carrying cases. Remember. To take your. Hello? Go first. <laughs> so you wanna, your... Do you want to do the advert, Bosco? To take your role play on the go. Go and play. You, go play. And go. if you want... Oh, okay, go ahead. Now you finish. And, and be sure to put in our code uh, at checkout, The Unexpectables, to get 10% off your entire order at dieharddice.com. Don't just die. Die hard with Die Hard Dice. Speaking of which, they actually released, if anyone here plays Magic the Gathering, uh, first of all, I'm so sorry. Uh, oh, second of all- Well, we're never gonna get sponsored by them now. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, if you, if you, uh, if anybody here plays Magic the Gathering, which is a very popular hobby, 
Uh, I'm just that was a jab. I'm jo I'm joking, Chad. Please. Um, they actually just recently released some uh, health counters for Magic the Gathering. These really, really cool kind of cylindrical looking health counters. They're very slick looking, and I kind of wish I played Magic a little bit more because they are extremely cool. They're a little more snazzy than just your standard like Magic the Gathering die counter that you use, but uh, it's it's pretty good. Also, I shouldn't talk. I, I've spent so much money trying to get a master set of the Forgotten Realms D&D set. Magic the Gathering cards. We all have our vices. Thanks. <sighs> I, should, I wish I could have just picked cocaine. It probably would have been cheaper. <laughs> That's not true. I doubt that. Okay. What did we say about not connecting di Die Hard Dice to hard drugs? That has nothing to do with Die Hard Dice. It has everything to do with my having a hobby. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> That's not a hobby. That's an addiction. Connor. Speaking of, uh, let's read off some bits and subs. <laughs> uh, addicted to donating. I get the true. Joke. Yeah. Uh, Are you an Elcor now? What is happening? <laughs> He's Malphite. Rock solid. No, I thought it was Eeyore. Oh. Well, that works if too. If I was <laughs> an Elcor. I would tell you what I was about to say with a singular word. That's all right. No one appreciates me. <sighs> Magic Ninjago, thank you for the 100 bits. I also got a new video set that comes with a dragon minifigure. Uh, I can finally make a dragonborn. Yeah. Viridian Winter, thank you for the 145 bits. Fun fact, while snakes don't feel affection like other animals, they can see their owners as a non-threat that cares for them and differentiate between scents and still uh, wrap around their owners for warmth. They will also watch TV, uh, interested in the changing lights and sounds and movements, and can also bond with their owners while doing so. So Nefane watching cartoons with Mr. Bubbles wrapped around her can actually happen. There's a great way for them to bond. I wasn't aware that snakes could hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. They got ear holes. They're really cool animals. Yeah. Luke the Lucas, thank you for the bit. Literally my last bit until payday. Oh. I'm looking forward to playing a paladin in FF14 because I'm a silly masochist who loves tanking in MMOs. I heard paladins are cool. Dr. Caliban, that you're the 100 best. Bosco, do you want my wife to come to our next planning session so that she can talk cars with you? I think that would be nice. She needs to teach Monty. Shut up. Shut up. Ladies can be mechanics too. Hashtag feminism. Zach Odoo, I think for the 400 bits, but Monty, does the car come with its own can of headlight fluid or is that sold separate? Shut up. <laughs> ask about the wiper fluid. Oh, bother. Peg like Bob, thank you for the 100 bits. We have a magic half gas, half Tesla gifted by elf Elon Musk. Uh, hopefully this one isn't a bastard. Zenlita, thank you for the 500 bits. The new PV mobile is a Ford Chevy Legacy with 34... One fourth inch rims and a fully tuned 13.2 liter V2 engine in the back, two speed automatic manual transmission, and two whole horsepower. Ivan really went all out. I understood that. I'm gonna use the bathroom. I'll be back later. <laughs> <laughs> Flustered bun, thank you for the two bits. Where's the ox cord, Monty? It's too late, she's gone. Damn. Burnout Vaughn, thank you for the 500 bits. I think you all have a needed distraction. For this much needed distraction in a trying time. I badly needed this. Yeah. Flustered bun, thank you for the six bits. Uh, Fucking Bosco, like, I love you. That car scene killed me. I have a headache from laughing too hard. Thank you for that. I'm glad I could provide entertainment for you. Someone H Lone Heart. smile in these dark times. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, that's okay. 
H. Lone Heart, thank you for the 17 months. Time to synchronize those smartwatches. Ooh, just like the movies. Zach Odu, I think you were the 500 bits. As an aside, my stepfather owned an auto shop in my home village, and what little information I retain from him is in stitches after the debut of this new vehicle. It was a fun night. Irrelevant, thank you for the 1,000 bits. Bosco asking Monty to describe a car was one of the funniest things I've seen in a while. I loved it. Stellar Coyote, thank you for the 100 bits. In your best action voice, John McClane was just the right guy in the wrong place at the wrong time. And this summer, it's happening again. Coming soon. Die Hard Dice 2. Die Harder. <laughs> that was pretty good. Oh my goodness gracious sakes alive. The Arcane Arcade. Thank you for the raid of 39. Uh... Sorry that to say that we're uh, wrapping up here, but thank oh, you so yeah. much. Thank you. Sorry. It figures we would have lovely people come to say hi right as we were finishing up. Thank you for being here. Don't forget to tune in next week. <laughs> <laughs> so is this an Elcor uh, thing or an Eeyore thing? Because I'm kind of torn between the two. You so we, uh, for, for those of Never. you who... For those of you who don't know what we're all about here, we play a lot of, uh, obviously, Dungeons & Dragons here on the channel. Uh, our schedule is every Wednesday and Saturday. Uh, our main game, The Unexpectables, is uh, D&D 5th Edition, and we're uh, in the multiple hundreds of episodes. So if you're mm -hmm. going to jump on board now, uh, probably best to go back through our archive. Um and also every other Saturday, we switch off between this, The Prince Division, which is like a modern fantasy cop drama, and uh, Gateway, which is my own creation that I DM. It's a, it's a Fallout RPG. And and uh, if if I understand correctly, I think the people over at Arcane Arcade do one of those as well. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, <laughs> Fallout is a good setting. Yeah, it's set in St. Louis. Ah, uh, meet me in St. Louis. Mm. Meet me at the fair. Yeah, but thank you for the raid. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, we're about wrap. We're ready to wrap up here, but uh, we perhaps, appreciate it. Perhaps next time you can join us. We'd love to have you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh. Okay. Uh, Are there more bits and subs? Yes. Fantastic, Callum. Thank you for the 50 bits. Bosco, quit grilling Monty about cars. You're you're being a backseat driver. Just let her take the wheel on the descriptions of the car and uh, uh, car fun. I think your joke stalled out at the end. <laughs> the only winner oh, here is Arkolf. Yeah. Not, not a single one of the rest of that got me, but the stalled out one did. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic, Helen. Thank you for the additional 100 bits. Also, episode title, Whiplash or Crash and Burn. Someone had Road Rage, and I really liked that one. Yeah. <clears throat> Chehalem Froggy's mom. Thank you for the 100 bits. It's a, got a cop motor, a 440 cubic inch plant. It's got cop tires, cop suspension, cop shocks. It's a model made before the catalytic converters, so it'll run good on regular gas. So you're saying it's a cop out? Well, you tried. Did not stick the landing on that one. <laughs> got a cop feel to it. I am hilarious. Burnout Vaughn, thank you for the 100 bits. The quest continues for Bosco to take the compliment. Will he ever accept the admiration of his peers? Tune in next week to... Who am I kidding? No, he won't. I'm glad you let everyone know the spoiler. Faceless42, thank you for the 100 bits. Dang, I missed the session. Oh, well. I also got my first COVID jab. Hey! Congratulations. While you're in bed, you could watch a thing called the VOD. It will allow you to recreate what we did in real time. You know, I think in this instance, Bosco might be deeper than I am. Maybe. It's pretty impressive. Arkolf, what happens if you try and go deeper? 
If I try to go deeper... Well, we've been over this before when trying to voice Doros. Monty, he just devolves into growls. I right, right, right. I think we need to remember he lives on a fault line. Don't Could you do potent... Could, could Arkov potentially replicate the brown note? What's the brown note? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you missed that episode of South Park. <laughs> you see, uh, the, the brown note is a note that makes you... Oh, you wait, my, my voice, my voice, my voice is not. Hang on. It makes you use the restroom. Oh, and it makes you do a number two. God, it's the note that right. makes you. It's <laughs> awful. Good noise. I thought you weren't allowed to use that. Well, it's the end of the show. I can do whatever I want. Shut up, Alexa. <laughs> Shut up. Connor is Vero Tanis. Uh, faceless. No, wait. Volk five five one. Thank you for the bit and the additional bit. I was playing MS DOS Oregon Trail and using your characters, and Michael was always the first to die. <laughs> Damn, I can't Spoiler. believe Michael got eaten by a guru. Spoiler, it's realistic. You shouldn't have dissed Terry. Brother Bisquick, thank you for the sixteen months. If Dennis Dyack owned an eighties Grand Tourer. He'd drive a red Buick Riata. There you go, Bosco. Car pun. Did you mix a car pun with a Dead House Sonata pun? I can't work under these conditions. Zach, I do. I think you're going to get one of the Grizzly Adams. Uh, as we said earlier, the Arcane Arcade. Thank you so much for the rate of 39. Really appreciate it. If you're at all interested in, in what we do on here, uh, all of our VODs are listed below at the link in our little uh, little YouTube. I'm, I'm just surprised they remember the Buick. It only ran from 88 to 91. Well played. Uh, and finally, Faceless42, thank you for the three bits. Joke's on you. It's 5.20 p.m. here in New Zealand. You have sheep. I like New Zealand. And Irrelevant, thank you for the 100 bits. Better car pun would be Hyundai Sonata. No, I appreciate the Buick pull. Uh, and with that, I think we're all out of... Get me out of here. Can right we write now. Therapod? Can we write Therapod? Actually, Draco and Therapod hey. are both on. Does anybody else I have see, any... I see Rabbit. Oh, I there is Rabbit. Rabbit. I also see Boobs McBallrog. There's a lot of people screaming right now. Yeah. I don't want to scare Caitlyn again, but I'm always tempted if we raid her to run down and scream raid just to freak her out. <laughs> I wouldn't this time though. I don't think I'll, I don't want to. I don't want to scare her again. Who who do we want to go for? We have a lot of options tonight. Anyone but Pharaoh. Okay. Let's do. We haven't done Rabbit in a while. I like yeah. Rabbit. He's yeah, playing Digimon. Yeah. Ooh, that'll be fun. Carrots available. Mr. Rabbit is very kind. Those of you who don't listen to Gateway should come start listening to Gateway because Rabbit's on Gateway and he is, his yeah. character is amazing. He's acting as amazing. Oh God, he's so freaking good. And if All you right. don't the Gateway, why? <sighs> Probably. What is our rate message going to be, you nerds? It's your fucking problem. Uh, My Otis Mon did nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I like it. I mean, <laughs> How do you spell My Otis Mon? Uh, M-Y-O-T-I-S-M-O-N, I believe. My O T. Yeah, that sounds right. Like this. We'll put it in the Twitch chat so people can copy and paste it. Someone never seen Digimon. Yep, I was All right. right. All right, go. My Otismon did nothing wrong. Goodbye, everyone. It Bye, guys. If doesn't grab you, I'll grab you. Thank Whoa. you for coming. Honor, we're going to have words. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>